Welcome to Tran Winds Between Horizons. Your progress is frequently autosaved, indicated by a small icon in the top right corner of the screen. All progress since the previous save point will be lost when you quit. You can neither manually save nor load a previous save point. There is no going back. You can find many options in the game settings to customize your experience. For example, you can turn off the time limit for dialogue choices and disable tutorials if desired. I must have been eight or nine years old when I first realized that I would never witness the Zephyr's arrival. As a small child, I often imagined myself stepping foot on Eurus D, leaving the ship for the first time in my life. I didn't understand at the time that this was a privilege reserved for my grandchildren. I still remember the conversation I had with my father. He was uncomfortable about the whole thing. And I get it. People don't like talking about their children's mortality. Still, he made me feel better. He reminded me of the importance of our mission for the survival of mankind. We're the only egg in the second basket, he said, or something like that. The basket being Eurus D, a habitable planet just four light years away from Earth. And the egg? That's the roughly 1,300 people aboard the Zephyr. Everyone I'll ever know. Press E to advance the dialogue. When prompted, to pick one of multiple answers, use A or D and confirm your selection using E. Repeat to Dorio. Stella? Stella! Did you go to bed already? Of course not. Well, in that case, do you have a few minutes? There is something I'd like to show you. What is it? You'll see. It's a surprise. Okay. I'll be right out. Great. I'll be in my bunk upstairs. As you make progress, journal entries are added to your PDA. Open it by pressing tab. Some tutorials briefly take over the controls in order to demonstrate something. Your personal digital assistant offers a variety of crucial tools to aid you in your investigations. Switch between tabs by pressing R and Q. Your progress objectives are documented here, organized by cases you are working on. Entries that don't relate to a specific case are listed in the general category. Press escape to go back to a previous interface or tab to close your PDA immediately. Repeat tutorial. I know you're sick, but I have to go out for a bit, okay? I'll be back very soon. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but I think it's supposed to be a creature from the developer's previous game. It looks like some sort of hairless monster chihuahua. Or as I like to say it, Chihuahua. Consult your map whenever you are trying to find a place on the ship. You can open it directly by pressing M. Stella's icon marks your current location. Use WASD to switch between select locations. Each location has a unique icon that is revealed once it has been discovered. Right now, you only have access to the small, small part of your ship that is relevant to your current tasks. As new cases open up, so will new areas. The Zephyr is a ring spaceship, as illustrated on the left side. This means that if you move in one direction long enough, you'll end up in the same place again. Repeat tutorial? Nope. I knew that Dad was worried about me. He'd noticed that I'd been sleeping a lot lately, and virtually stopped socializing. I wasn't sure at the time what was wrong with me. But I found it harder and harder to get motivated. What is it that you wanted to show me? Our messages from Earth for the Arrival Day celebrations came in earlier. Already? Arrival Day is still weeks away. Yeah, they always send the messages in advance to be sure we have them in time. Earth has a surprise for us this year. What surprise? Tell me already. Everyone got a private message from their relatives. We got our own personal message from Mum, Stella. Can you believe it? Navigator Joseph has already related to me. You want to see it? Yes, of course. Okay, here we go. So, this part is only for my family, right? Okay, hi. Oh my god, I haven't prepared anything. They only just told me I could say something to you guys in private. How are you out there? I hope things are going better than they are on Earth. We've been having rolling blackouts again. I was so worried they'd get in the way of this recording. Anyway, I wanted to say that we recently received the video you sent last year. Stella, I had never seen you in that uniform before. Wow! And William, you look like you haven't aged a day. Still the handsome young man I met 40 years ago. Remember that night? We were on a ship of all places. 
What's it called? Something Sparrow? We're mixing it up now. I'm so proud of both of you. This mission is such an incredible, enormous thing you're doing. Everyone on Earth is rooting for you. It's been so many years since you left, and it still doesn't feel real. I really hope these messages get to you. I worry about it every year. I don't know how you do it. It's all magic to me. You'll see more of me in the public video, unless you watch that already. Happy arrival day. You say that, right? Love you both. That was it. Seems like they weren't given much time to record these. I'm just glad she had the opportunity at all. Is this going to be part of the yearly update from now? I don't know. Maybe there's something about it in the other files. They just came in an hour ago. Don't tell anyone about it yet, okay? Are you alright, Dad? Something your mom said has me worried. What? There's no way she forgot the name of the ship where we met. I... I have to talk to the captain. About mom? Not directly. It's complicated. Just can't wait. Sorry, I'll explain later. What the? I'm getting a call. What's going on tonight? Sergeant Alderich? Assistant Chief Stella, are you with your father? He just left. Let's talk to the captain. Then maybe you can step in. Could you come talk to me at the security office? Sure, I'll be there in a minute. Are you all suited up? I am. Why? You might have to look into something. I'll explain when you're here. It seems like you may need to brush up on your suit's scanning ability. Trigger it by pressing spacebar. Objects that you can investigate are highlighted in blue for a short period of time. Collect them by walking in range and pressing E before they stop glowing. Once a clue has been collected, an entry about it is created in your PDA's evidence tab. New and updated clues are marked with a special icon. Try finding out more by hitting spacebar. Repeat the turn. Nope. Dad seemed to be pretty shaken up, but I didn't understand why this detail was such a big deal to him. And what did the captain know about it? Remember to hold shift while moving the sprint. Personally, I would rather it be a toggle. Because otherwise you're holding shift with your pinky for hours. Whenever a developer doesn't have a toggle key, I just kind of assume they don't play that many games. Pressing E nearby a person will start a conversation with them if they have something to say to you. If they don't, the speech bubble symbol above their head will be missing or grayed out. Good evening, sergeants. Assistant Chief. Hey, Style. Paul. Address her properly. Come on, Dad. He is right. We should stick to protocol, Sergeant Paul. Of course. My sincere apologies, Assistant Chief. Anyway, let's talk about the reason I called you. A door in the network area triggered a security alert. We've had some false reports due to defective sensors lately, so it might be nothing. However, I tried to check in with programmer Aaron, who works down there, and he isn't answering his PDA. It's possible that he is wearing noise protection, but we should make sure everything is alright. Could you take the elevator down to the inner hole and have a look? Of course. Should I ask an enforcer to come along? I don't think that's necessary. Programmer Aaron should be in the network office. Alright, I'll make sure he's okay and report back. All your dialogues are recorded in your PDA. If you ever find that your journals aren't detailed enough, you can reread any conversation right here. Okay, number one, this is not how a security team would typically operate. It would never send a person by themselves to check out a disturbance especially if the recipient of that disturbance is not responding. A security teams would at least send two people. And seriously, no cameras? There's more than just these people in the office. Stella is the assistant chief to an entire team, and there's at least, we'll say, four to 12 people. At least four with names. I don't know about anybody else. I can't currently speak to anybody. There's no icons above their head right now. Even though the tutorial just introduced that concept to us, it does not exist here. So now we need to head to the basement of this area. It's the inner hole. While I can't attempt to do the fast travel, all that really does is it drops me right here at the tram. No matter where, so even if I'm at the tram and I try to fast travel here, it'll still drop me at the tram. So what I have to do is actually take this elevator down and then go to the left. The elevator is to my right per the map and the map does update in real time. Weirdly enough, the game has you locked out of many areas until you unlock them through the story progression, but you're a member of the security. <laughs> there, nothing really should be locked off to you. 
especially since we can already access vulnerable parts of the station, such as the top floor. All right, so if we take a look around, there's no combat or anything in this game. Our role is it purely an investigative one. What the? What happened to the door? Just collecting them and adding them to your PDA. You'll need them later. You can ignore the little pop-ups at the top of the screen. Programmer Aaron! Aaron, are you alright? Oh, crap. Aaron? What's wrong? What happened? My head hurts so bad. It's bruised in the back. Can you move? It is. Ugh. Ow. What happened? I think someone was here. Someone was here? What do you mean? I, I went to the cafeteria for my evening break, but I returned a little earlier than usual. I've been working on a new data routing algorithm today, and I had an idea I didn't want to forget. When I came back, the door to the network area was broken. I wanted to check if everything was alright in my office, and when I came in here, there was someone standing next to my desk. What? Who? I don't know. I think a man. He was wearing a disguise. I turned to run back out, but he jumped me. Hit my head with something. That's all I can remember. <clears throat> Give me a second, I'll get help. Dad? Something happened down here. Aaron was attacked. Attacked? How's he doing? He seems okay, but his head is bruised. I'll send a medical team. Who attacked him? I don't know. He said the person was disguised. Seems like they broke into the network area. The door at the entrance has been cracked open. I'll inform Sergeant Aldrich and join you as soon as I can. Do you have your weapon on you? I... Yeah, I do. Good. I'll be there in a few minutes, okay? In the meantime, you should have a look around and talk to Programmer Aaron. Maybe you can find out what the intruder wanted in the network area. Okay. Watch your back. I'll be there soon. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Let me think. Do you have any idea what the intruder was doing in here? I haven't had much time to think about it yet. But since we're in the network area, I'll wager our guess and say it was something network related. I can take a look around and see if I notice anything unusual. No, you should take it easy until the medical team is here. I'll investigate the rooms and let you know if I find anything. Thank you. What exactly do I find in this area? The various ship networks can be monitored from here. You can access them via the terminals next door, but only if you have access rights or my special tool. I see. That's all for now. The device on the floor looks out of place. Maybe programmer Aaron can tell me more about it. I should show it to him. You just found an interesting clue. Progress in your cases will often be made by showing the right evidence to the right people. Regardless of whether or not a person has something to tell you, it is always possible to show them a clue you collected. To do so, press F and choose what you'd like to talk about. But we can also talk about the terminals. Excuse me? What is the purpose of those terminals in the next door? They monitor the daily flow of data across the ship's various networks. Could have a closer look at it. Maybe the intruder tried to mess with it. I don't think they could have, since you either need access rights or my special tools will override the lock. Who has those access rights? Besides myself, only Engineer Farad. He was still at lunch when I left. Is it possible that he has something to do with all this? I really don't think so. If he wanted to mess with something in the network area, he could just do it any time. He works here every day and he has access to everything. No need to put on a disguise and bonk me over the head. That makes sense. Look, if you have reason to believe that the intruder somehow gained access, I'll unlock the terminals so you can have a closer look. Alright, thank you. Do you know what this is? Of course, that's one of my tools. Where did you find this? Next to the door to the network access point. point. I definitely didn't put it there. Do you think that the tool could have been used by that intruder? I'm sure. You'll need to access and manipulate the data on the terminals at the network access point. So that's probably what they wanted in here. Is there a way to find out what they did exactly? <laughs> be a good start if we knew which network they manipulated. I'll grant you access to the terminal. Thank you. What can I see on those screens? Each terminal shows a visualization of data that was sent through the respective network over the past 24 hours. Aaron created the visualization a while back to make it readable for non-technical users. The left side is data being sent. The right side is data being received. If a network was manipulated, there should be some irregularity on one of the terminals. Have a look. Thank you. Your first case. Progress is tracked in your PDA. The solution to a case is always a piece of evidence. You can assign it from the selection here. Once the solution has been assigned, a submit button will appear. After hitting that button, you can no longer change the solution and the case is closed. You alone decide at which point to submit the solution. However, be careful if you aren't confident in your conclusions just yet. There is no going back. Let's ask about him. That's me. 
Let's ask about the broken door. That's the door I mentioned. It was broken when I came back from dinner. Whoever was here clearly doesn't usually have access to the network area. I should have called security right when I saw it instead of going back inside. Ugh. Try asking about the network office? I'm sorry, but I don't know what to say about that. Or the network access point? Sorry, I don't know what to say about that. Let's go update our evidence by checking out the terminals now that we have access to the tool. Taking another look around an environment you visited earlier is often worth it if you have a suspicion that something changed in the meantime. For example, you may find objects that were altered in some way, weren't there before, or weren't considered relevant yet. You can notice that one of the X buttons has now turned into this panel here. And this is our graphical representation. This is not just meaningless gibberish, this is your clue. One of the things I like about Between Horizons is the puzzles actually make you think. And to that effect, we will work together with me guiding you, once we've collected all the clues, to figure out what the solution is. When you collect a clue, again, after it was changed, the title, description, and image of the PDA entry may be updated. Yeah, I think I updated all of them. So let's take a look at our notes. Only the workers in the network area are cleared to access this terminal. Programmer Aaron had granted me temporary access. He said that the screen shows a visualization of data being transmitted through the network over the past 24 hours. The amount of data sent on the left side should be the same as the amount of data received on the right side. All of them will look different. Now, this bigger screen is the exact same version, just an enlarged portion of the other screens. So these are not random gibberish or gibberish. I don't know if it's hard G or not. They all actually mean something here. And we'll, we'll talk to Aaron and see if we can figure out more. Nothing in the game, as far as clues determining the conclusive process, was something that I had to guess. I managed to figure out everything to the end of the game through actual puzzle solving. Puzzle solving that I don't see often in games. Many times games just introduce the Temple of Hanoi or some other <laughs> garbage like that. This game actually does require you to think, and that's one of the reasons why I thought, oh, this would be great for making a video on Let's talk to him about one of the terminals. So, what exactly do I see on those terminals? A visualization of data that was sent and received on each network in the past 24 hours. The amount of sent data on the left should always be equal to the received amount on the right. The terminals are intended for monitoring only, but it is theoretically possible to add or remove data. If a manipulation like that took place, the amount of data on the left and right won't match up anymore. How about this specific one? You see anything off with it? There might be, I'd have to study it closely. No, you should take it easy, I can inspect it myself. Just one more question. They all look different on the left and right. So I suppose this square represents multiple of those lines? That's correct, but I couldn't tell you how many. Barrett looks at those things daily, but it's been a while since I had to look myself. Alright, so this is basically a variable. You have to figure out how much the square costs or uh, attributes to it. On the right window here, this is when we make our conclusion, and once we do that, there's no going back. The game isn't really cleanly divided into chapters, but you are given cases as the story progresses. I will also say that I have deliberately flubbed all of the cases as well on a on a second playthrough. And unfortunately, this is where the game's weakness does show because it's a very detailed narrative. They don't have a lot of variation in it. And I don't want to speak more than that to avoid spoiling, but I did try many things because I wanted to unlock all the achievements. All right. On the middle panel, we have the specific case information, which is related to this. This this is our tree, essentially. We can scroll through and see anything that jumps out at us. And if you have highlighted text on, that'll give you a hand. And maybe my success was attributed to this, but I would like to think that I could have done it without it, but maybe not as fast because I do have a limited amount of time to get these videos out. <laughs> Programmer Aaron confirms that one square in the network visualization is equivalent to multiple strokes, but he couldn't remember how many. I could try assuming a plausible number. So let's use the Q and R keys to go to the next page. And let's just take a look at one of them. So we have four lines, then a square and a line, and then two lines. And then this one, we have two squares, a line and three lines. This is not necessarily... The square doesn't necessarily mean two. In this case, while the, we would have a square here and a one, it's realistically the entire column. If we were to try two, 
Okay, we have four equals two plus one, that's three, so that'd be wrong. Two plus one equals three. Okay, that fits. Two equals two. So we can see that it's an incomplete conclusion here. I do happen to know the solution, but I'm mentally working through it with you, because I think that's part of the game. The game is, is inquisitive in nature. We should ask these questions. If we take a look at this, we see that it quickly breaks down. This couldn't necessarily be four, because then you'd have two equals four plus one. Realistically, what we need to do is we need to tally up all of them. All right, so this is four plus five, that's nine, plus two is 11. Okay, we have three here. If this entire box was 11, minus three, that's eight. Two boxes, that's gonna be four. All right, let's keep going along and seeing if square equals four. We have two, four, six, and then if square equals four, then this is 10. Let's see if this checks out. We have four and eight with these squares, nine, 10. Okay, looks good. Three, five, seven, 11, because we're adding the four. Five plus the four, that's nine, 10, 11. Two, four, or I'm sorry, two, six, 10. Four, eight, 10. All of them check out. Let's go back to the first one we were looking at. Four, eight, nine, 10, 11. Four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve. Something's wrong with the PDA network, but let's double check. Four, five, six, seven lines. So seven plus four, that's 11. Four lines plus eight, that is 12. So there's definitely something wrong with the PDA network terminal. Let's go ahead and solve this. We're gonna pick our, which terminal did the intruder manipulate? It is the, not the medical data terminal, the PDA network terminal. Stella, everything all right? Program Aaron, how do you feel? I feel all right, Chief. I'll get myself checked out to be sure. I found out what the intruder was up to. He manipulated one of the ship's networks. Good job. I think I even know which one. Did you have a look, Program Aaron? Of course. Let me see. Yes, you're right. Looks like some malware was injected into the PDA network. You agree? Good. I mean, not good. Excellent work, Stella. Listen, I actually came out here to tell you something else. I've been thinking about what the intruder's plan was exactly. These terminals in the access point only contain very recent information flowing from each network to our central servers. The guy was after recent data. He could have accessed it right there using my tool, but he may have injected malware instead. The terminals are connected to the big servers down the hall for regular backups. Maybe his plan was to exploit this connection. For what purpose? I can only assume to override access right, so we can extract historical data from there. Would he have to physically go there to do that? Correct. Stella, follow me, now. Hey, stop! Stella, let's go! Don't worry, the guns are pretty much for show. There are no space zombies or anything we have to really do. Enough! One more step and I'll shoot. Lie down flat on the ground, now! Dark skin, blue eyes. We'll see if anybody matches that description later. But the story will not come back to this until much later on in the game. So that's between you and me. What happened? I, uh, the door is crushing me. What can I do? Why is it closing? They're sealing up. There must have been a breach. Where's the override? I don't think there is one. What do I do? What should I do? Stella, listen to me. Uh, Sparrow was our code word. What? What are you talking about? Liz tried to say something's wrong. Where's the override, Dad? Dad! Dad! And his body will be returned to the ship. He will stay with us until all of our journey ends. On a more personal note, I want to say that William was not only the best chief of security I could have ever wished for, but also a dear friend. I did not expect him to go before me, and I was not prepared for it. I don't think I could have been. I would also like to take this opportunity to put any rumors to rest. William's death was a deeply unfortunate combination of circumstances. 
he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The cargo box came loose due to a malfunction and pierced the hole in the floor of the inner, inner hole. Air began to stream out the, into the vacuum of the outer hole. The resulting loss of air pressure caused the emergency doors to shut. Thanks to the swift intervention of our brave mechanics, the breach could be contained shortly thereafter. However, I kept staring at the notes for my speech, even though I wasn't reading a word of it. We had agreed to frame my father's death as an unfortunate accident, to keep the intruder a secret in the name of public peace and safety. It was our highest imperative. If there was a person between the ship's population and their safety, they would get crushed by design. There was no security override to save the individual. In a way, this concept made sense to me. It had to. After all, I was the chief of security now. I never know what's AI voice generated, but I will say that I wish that the, all the rest of the game was voiced. And I thought about ways I could turn this to a video. One of them being recording without the voice and then using the voice algorithm to try to do all of her lines. But I wouldn't make my deadline at that time. You've just received a message. Open your PDA to view it. This is one of the weaker parts of the game right here. You should go talk to a Cinder in person if you want to respond. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we have evidence that there is a mobile communication method. They are talking to you via this mobile communication method. But as a game mechanic, you have to go to that person if you ever want to answer their, their request or whatever they're talking about. It's just a little bit weird. I'm glad you're doing better, Chi-Chi. I have some things I can take care of. Don't go running off again, okay? Who's the best girl? You are. That's right. Oh, and this button here will change the background. We'll leave it as a space. My handbook said that I had to allow myself to grieve. Live through the pain to overcome it. I tried to bottle it all up instead, but my thoughts kept circling to the events of that night. It had been weeks, and we still had no idea who we'd been chasing down there, or what they'd tried to accomplish. I kept thinking that things would have played out differently if only I'd acted faster. I worked a lot to keep my mind in check. Everybody was out celebrating arrival day, but I was glad that the captain called me over. Chief Stella, I'm sure you're here to see the captain. Just go on through whenever you need to talk to her. If she's too busy, she'll let you know by locking her door. Oh, I know. Thank you. Captain Talia, you wanted to talk to me? Chief Stella, thank you for coming so quickly, especially on arrival day. Unfortunately, some matters cannot wait. During a routine inspection of the inner hall B, Enforcer Bodo caught Janitor Rose removing plating from the wall. She was in the process of retrieving a piece of paper hidden inside the secret compartment. A piece of paper. We secured it. Please have a look for yourself. It's on the table over there. Talia wants you to read the letter on the table. Now that it is relevant to your investigations, you can have a closer look. Investigate a letter and give it a read in your PDA. Then show it to Talia to talk to her about it. While your character will fully interact with Talia as if she had read it, as player and audience, I think we should at least know what we're talking about. We found this suspicious letter. Hello again. Thank you for your message. We have great sympathy for your struggle. You are not alone in thinking that more democracy is needed on the Zephyr, that's our ship, and our cause grows stronger every day. Come to the Arrival Day installation in the Earth Museum tonight. Talk to one of the job representatives and mention the word freedom. The symbol on this letter will be on their uniform, not necessarily in this color. Another hint can be found inside this very compartment. With this, you should have all the information you need. The symbol being three stripes. We can now bring up what evidence we want to talk about. Let's talk about our dad first. <sighs> Look, I get that this is a storytelling device, but introducing your father just to immediately kill him off. Uh, I mean, yeah, that that's that. I, I understand Batman is that way, but not everything has to be that kind of story. 
I've always been very fond of your father. Okay, anything else you want to tell us? How about the broken door? Did we uncover anything new about this case? No, we didn't. Alright, what about yourself? Let's talk about you. That's me. Okay. Did our father talk to you about anything regarding the transmission we received from Earth? Because he said he was going to. Nope. How about your secretary? Tell me about him. Sounds like something you need to figure out yourself. Alright, fine. Let's talk about this suspicious letter. What do you make of this? I was hoping to get an assessment from my chief of security. Well, it sounds troubling. The wording is a little opaque, but unless it's some sort of game, it seems like someone's trying to put together a dissident movement on the ship. The fact that the letter was hidden inside a wall doesn't exactly make it less suspicious. I agree. What's more, it reads like this is not the first letter in this communication. Do you think that whoever wrote this has something to do with... Let's not jump to conclusions, but we need to find out what's behind this as soon as possible. Division among the population could jeopardize the mission, especially if it goes unaddressed for too long. Now, the letter contains instructions on making contact with another person at the arrival day festivities. We will keep an eye out on the event later tonight. Until then, we have some time to figure out what we're dealing with. I need you to look into two things. I will open a separate case about each of them. Your first assignment, find out the intended recipient of this letter. You already have a prime suspect here, Janitor Rose, who was caught retrieving it from its hiding spot. However, when Enforcer Boda was leading Rose away, she ran into someone else who was not supposed to be down there. Who? Technician Lewis. His presence in the inner hole seems suspicious. Can't rule out the possibility that he was there to retrieve the letter, and that Janitor Rose just happened upon him. You know I don't usually intrude into your personal life, but I have to ask. Will you be able to remain impartial investigating him? Yes, of course. Good. You might also want to have a look around Rose and Lewis's bunks. Do I have permission to go in there? They are both suspected of a degree 6 violation. The codex explicitly allows bunk searchings in this case. Right, of course. Your second assignment might be trickier. Get on the trail of the sender. The only lead we have here is that note was written on a piece of paper. It makes sense, since communication via the PDA network is monitored. However, paper is not distributed for private use. Hence, it must have been stolen from a public space. As far as I know, there aren't many places on the ship where you can get your hands on it. All of them should be in the public area. Ask Sergeant Alderick about potential sources of paper. He knows the daily going-ons better than anyone in the crew. Don't tell him why. I suggest you and I keep the contents of this letter to ourselves until we know what we are dealing with. Did you get all that? Yes, Captain. Once you've submitted your results in both cases, come talk to me again. Yes, Captain. One more thing, Stella. I know how hard it is to lose someone you love, but you shouldn't think you're letting your father down if you stop torturing yourself. I'm fine. Our mission needs a strong, reliable chief of security, especially now that this letter has surfaced. Can I count on you being that for us? Of course. I'm aware that none of this is easy. You are very young. But I need to know that you will try. Understood, Captain. It will. Good. We'll talk later. Dismissed. And... Happy arrival day. Happy arrival day, Captain. Talia rarely let the mask slip, but I'd been seeing it more and more lately. She'd gotten visibly angry the other day, which I'd never seen before. She wasn't taking Dad's death lightly and probably felt increasingly isolated. Or maybe I was just projecting. Instead of asking him about his boss, he's got nothing to say about that. Tell me about yourself. That's me. Anything to say about my dad? Nope. Alright. Cases Talia has given you lead to new areas on the ship. As a result, they are now accessible to you and their locations can be revealed on the map. The ship is segmented into multiple main areas, three of which are accessible now. Each main area contains a train station. In order to immediately travel to a location, simply select it on the map and press F. You'll be taken to the closest available train station. Alright, we can take a look at these icons. This is the captain's deck or office. Here we have our security office and the locker room. Here we have the brig. Down here we have the network access points that we were investigating earlier. And there is no floor one or three that we can go to. We'll just assume that there are other parts of the ship that there is no need to access during the normal part of the game. Chief, ready for some updates? Sure. 
the ethics committee invited you to the next monthly meeting. Chief Williams always declined these invitations because he wanted to keep the security separate from the judicial branch. You want to continue in this direction or change things up? Can't hurt to hear what they talk about in these meetings, at least once. Some of them I'm coming. Will do. In other news, we received an anonymous report from the bio area earlier today. There is a shortage of painkillers at the hospital. Nobody seems to know why. Could be mismanagement. Could be foul play. We should probably look into it sooner or later. But for now, the captain wants you to talk to the suspects in the brig. She didn't tell us why they were apprehended. I'm sure you know? That probably wasn't an oversight, Paul. I can't talk about it. Sorry. I'm sure the captain will share more information soon. That's it for now. Let us know if we can help with your investigations. Let's try talking about the prisoners. Do you have any further information on the suspects in the brig? I assume the captain has told you everything. She mentioned the necklace. Necklace? No. Technician Lewis was wearing a pendant that is not manufactured on the ship. Either someone made it or brought it from Earth. Here, have a look. We confiscated it in catalog. Why did you take it from him? It's not illegal for people to make their own jewelry. He was behaving suspiciously. Enforcer Bodo suspected that it might be related to the case, so she asked him about it. But he wouldn't say where he got it from. You know him pretty well, Chief. Do you remember him wearing this? No, never saw it. He must have started wearing it at some point over the past few weeks. Maybe he'll tell you more about it. All right, let's look a little bit more into this Lewis guy. If we take a look at our comms, we actually, at the beginning of this chapter, saw a message from Lewis. <laughs> I don't under I don't know the full context of what's happening here, but given the chronology of the game, it looks it sounds like he's breaking up with your character while she's in the midst of grieving for her father. I just don't understand you. You've always been a little closed off and paranoid, but it got so much worse over the last few weeks. I know you're going through a lot, but I don't even know how to help you or if it's possible at all to get through to you. Don't expect me to come running after you anymore. If you want, we can talk sometime in the future when you feel better. <laughs> okay, I know that my voice for him didn't help, but I, I don't I really have a good estimation of this guy right here. <laughs> and now we have a necklace that has suddenly appeared on him. And he is a, a possible, he's a suspect in the current investigation. The pendant looks like half a heart. Necklaces like this are not officially manufactured on the Zephyr. It must be handmade. Lewis was wearing it when he was apprehended in inner hole B. He didn't want to comment when asked about it by security. We ask you about Rose. Didn't we talk about that before? Nothing new for now. So because we talked about Lewis, that also encompassed Rose. And these guys are a pair uh, in this current dialogue situation. So talking to one about it, we'll talk to them. Okay, can we talk about anything else? We, talk, we could try bringing up a suspicious letter and our character will refuse to talk about it. This evidence is classified. I should be careful about who I show it to. How about our captain? Nope, I'm not sure how to help you with that, Stell. How about, how about your old chief, my dad? I don't think I can help you with this right now. Any progress on the previous case? I don't know how I can help you with that, Stell. Let's take a look at our office. Okay, <laughs> we're done looking at the office. Since we're here, why don't we take a look at the locker room? We can find outfits here, but nothing for us to investigate or do anything with. Like with the Thaumaturge, I don't want to go around hitting space war or the snap. That that's in that case, it was right click the snap fingers. I don't want to be mashing the the scan button the entire game because then you'll be hearing that ringing sound through all the hours that we are playing. You don't need that. I already know where, what we need to search, which I don't know if that makes for exciting or not. I see my role as a kind of a tour guide or instructor about the game rather than trying to explore it with you, at least for the purposes of this investigative game. So before we head to the brig to, to question these suspects, let's search their bunks first. This area is the public area. Are you waiting for the event to start? That's right, Chief. I'm actually going to be part of the event. I need to head back inside soon. I'm just here for moral support. And I promised Dever and I'd stop by. Are you coming, Chief? Maybe. I still have some things to take care of. This door we can see is... Uh, oh, the mouse cursor isn't showing. The, the red light means you can't enter the room. Historian Baptist. You look upset. Is something the matter? No, oh, Chief. I'll be fine. Just need a minute. Did something happen? <sighs> it's just... We're going to show this year's message from Earth after the show. The captain only just forwarded them to us, and I was going over all the files. You see, like this year, a lot of personal messages from friends and family were included. 
When I heard that, I really expected to find one for my own kids. But they didn't, it seems that they didn't send one. So I wondered, is it really possible they couldn't be bothered? But I don't think that's it. I know I haven't seen them in a long time, but it's really out of character for them to pass up such an opportunity. Do you think they're in some kind of trouble? Earth would have notified us, right? I'm sorry, I really don't know. I know that Earth notified us about close relatives dying in previous years, but other than that... I don't think they're dead, of course, but so what could have stopped them from sending a message? Your guess is as good as mine. Whatever got in the way this time around, I'm sure they'll be included next year. I hope you're right. This is going to bother me for at least a year now. I should head back inside. We are setting everything up for tonight. They're probably wondering where I went. Of course, please don't worry too much. Mom tried to tell us something in her message. Maybe this has something to do with it. Were they not allowed to speak? Does everyone on Earth know something we don't? We have the gym here and the activities room. There are some things we could investigate there, but as our tour guide, I'm showing you things at a pace that I think is probably best for the video. Welcome, everybody. Settle down, please. You all know me. I'm Teacher Mariola. I'm also a member of the ethics community. I think that's supposed to be something like a graduation cap, but to me, all I can think of is she's wearing a cheese wedge. I feel particularly honored to be giving this year's address because it's a very special arrival day. Today, we celebrate the Zephyr's arrival in exactly 100 years, but that's not the only number I have for you. You can imagine that, as a teacher, I like to do a little math now and then. 1,300 people are aboard this ship at all times, give or take. In other words, we spend a collective 1,300 years of our lives here every year. In 100 years, this number will have grown to 130,000 years. That is well over 1 million hours. Taking into account the 33 years we have already been here, that makes 1.5 million hours. Now, let's face it, we haven't spent all these hours being our most productive. We've been asleep for about a third of them. It may seem that during most of our hours, nothing of importance is happening. We do our jobs, follow our routines. But that's not true. Everything each of us does here is important. We are on the Zephyr. We are bringing humanity out to the stars. And we are bringing the stars to humanity. Nothing we do is ever mundane because we do it light years away from home. Never forget that. However, this does not mean that we shouldn't be doing our best to make each of those hours count. The mission is as fragile as it is important. There is no room for slip-ups or slacking off. And frankly, anything less than 100% dedication doesn't befit pioneers like ourselves. So the next time you find yourself tired or unmotivated or scared, remember these words. We have a million and a half hours to give to the mission, but all of it could be undone in just one. Spend those hours wisely. Fill them with commitment and purpose and dignity. Happy arrival day. Chief Stella, how did you like my speech? I liked it. I think it reminded everybody of some important things. I never thought about how many hours we spend out here. I hoped it would give some people food for thought. Right, two people did leave. It's a, it was a student who felt a little embarrassed and a teacher who went to go console the student. Um, after we search amongst and deal with the whole Lewis situation, we'll inquire more about that problem there. Now we have reached the residential area. Map trying to forcefully pan back to where we started from, even though we began walking away. Let's open up our map itself, and we can see that there is one area above us and two bunks to the right that we can eventually unlock. As a game mechanic, I understand what it's trying to get at, but I don't think it should reveal at least the, the, the second bunk to the right until it's part of a relevant case. This door is green for us. We can enter. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought... Isn't this Lewis's bunk? It's my it's my son's bunk. He's not here right now. Was he expecting you? Not exactly. Mind if I take a look around? Huh? No, not at all. Feel right at home. I'm sure Lewis will be back soon. So, Stella, how's your father? He, um... He died in an accident about a month ago. You didn't know? No. Oh, no, my dear William. I'm so sorry. How are you holding up? That's okay. I'm fine. You really missed all of it. The accident... The funeral. It was a pretty big deal. I suppose I did. I'm really sorry. No need to apologize. I'll stick around for a moment if that's okay. Go to Xena. And it doesn't look like there's anything else here. But we did find Xena in this. Uh, let's talk more about it. Um, before we do the note to Xena, why don't we just talk about William? 
Uh, uh, sorry, I don't know. What, what's the question? Okay, she doesn't have anything to say about that. Let's take a look at the, the hint that we got. Note to Zena. A digital note I found in Lewis's book. It says, Mom, please stay in here. Do not go without, out without me. Okay. If you've ever played the Ace Attorney series, each section is its own chapter, and it gets rid of evidence that are not relevant to the chapter at all. However, this game is more continuous than that, and cases can overlap depending on how you're solving them. For example, we have two different cases right now. For these reasons, the, the your evidence locker, as it were, is going to be completely cluttered with things. I don't know if a, a single time we'll ever use Chi Chi. <laughs> I, on my on my bogus run where I just wanted to bomb the whole thing, I submitted Chi Chi as my suspect for all cases, and the game did not care. All right, so that's the only information we have, other than Zena Lewis's mother. She recently retired from her job as an engineer. Start asking how she's doing. Is that me? I look so old. Right, let's ask about her son. Well, Lewis, he's such a good boy, isn't he? Uh, yeah. That message for you on the display over there. Sounds like Lewis wants you to stay up here in his bunk. Oh, yeah, he placed it right by the door, so I don't forget. Why can't you go out? I'm sorry, don't you have your own bunk? Uh, he's just so protective of me. But sometimes I still go out. I went to the Rival Day celebration just last week, and nothing bad happened. Last week? You mean last year? Remember that today where everybody's going through the hubbub of Rival Day. Um, yes, last year, last year. Case updated to recruit and new evidence of Xena's condition. Xena, are you feeling all right? Huh? Of course, I feel great. Are you sure? Sure about what? Never mind. Actually, let's head to the bottom floor because I think there's some people we can chat with on the way. I'm not sure if a space station would have stairs go in a continuous line like that. I do think from a game play standpoint, it's nicer just being able to hold one direction and travel that way. But I don't. I, I always feel awkward climbing down those stairs because I wonder if that's how it would be constructed. Chief, you here for the party? Hi, everybody. Chief. Hey, Stella. It's... You want a drink? Or are you just here to snoop on us? I'm working, sorry. Snooping, then. Don't you ever share a bottle with us lowly folks? You know, I would really like to take some time off once in a while. Is there really so much crime happening in this village-sized ship? I mean, like you're ever at your job, Michio. Low blow, Neva. Well, I have to get going. I'm sure all that crime doesn't stop itself. Dude, shut up. What's with the bootlegging all of a sudden? Be nice, Neva. I'll, uh, leave you guys to it. The first time I passed through this area, I thought those chairs were stationary bikes for people to exercise on. We're at the second apartment complex and we're looking for the... I'm trying to, this, this mar I'm trying to enter the next lane so I can walk past the stairs. Here's Rose's bunk. We have the janitor's board and some flowers. Let's take a look at our evidence. Red roses. People are allowed to grow their own plants, but very few engage in it because the conditions on the ship make it very difficult. Rose has always had a green thumb. I wonder if her given name somehow determined her obsession with flowers. The latest message on the board from earlier today, it reads, I have a spill down here. Could you help me real quick? Much appreciated, Isaac. To the right of here is the hospital, but we don't currently have access to the hospital. Again, this is a little ridiculous. <laughs> Even though they talk about missing painkillers, which is not part of our case right now, there it, I don't know why any area would be locked off to you now that you are the chief of security. <laughs> Game design standpoint, yes, I get it. It's just a little bit weird. But head on down to the basement. That's what I call it. I know we still need to head to the brig, but there are some things we'd like to clear up first. We don't have to run all the way to the left. See, here's the map. And if we, we want to actually head down here because we'd like to inquire more about Rose being down there. While we can take this elevator down, which is what we did at the beginning of the game, this area here does have a passage directly to it. It is this B maintenance door.
here we have a recycle icon and a locked door. We'll come here and visit him more than once, but let's go and get this taken care of first. Hello, Engineer Isaac. Huh? Oh, Chief. Sorry, I didn't hear you coming. A crew member down here in the hall. To what do I owe the pleasure? Investigating a security matter. I see. Well, welcome to the club of people working on arrival day. Feel free to look around down here, but please don't touch anything. If you excuse me, I'll have to take care of the tubes here before another accident happens. Can you tell me about the janitor's board? I saw the message you sent to Janitor Rose earlier today. Did she respond? Of course, she came here right away. Where was that spill she helped with? Right here in the recycling center. It's all cleaned up now, but that took a while. Let's ask, can we ask about Rose? Huh, sorry, I don't know. Okay, can we ask about Lewis? Huh, sorry, I don't know. He said that Rose was down here cleaning a spill. Here we have our officers. What are you two doing down here? Captain told us to keep an eye out. The hidden compartment where the letter was found is just down the hall from here. We're keeping an eye on it from a distance in case someone else comes to check on it. Good. That compartment is right here. Let's see if this engineer knows anything about it. There's going to be a lot of false leads, but I'm kind of working through the game clues with you. Uh, sorry, I don't know. Also, I don't want people wondering if maybe I'd asked this question, maybe I would have gotten new information. So that was a dead end and as far as talking to Isaac about. Let's take a look at our evidence. Janitor Rose uncovered a suspicious letter here. It looks like somebody purposely unscrewed the plate and then loosely reattached it. I flipped around and found a symbol on its backside. Okay. Let's ask these guys if they know anything about everything that's going on. Tell me about the wall plate. I have nothing to say about that right now. Okay. Tell me about... Okay, it, it, was, it highlighted server room. Sometimes when you're moving up and down the evidence indicators, it just doesn't have the right character selected. Tell me about Rose. Nothing. How about Bodo? M maybe Bodo has better information. I doubt it, though. But it, by talking to Bodo, we have established a, a new member of our evidence locker. Are you sure you don't have anything about... How about Lewis? Okay, what about the piece of paper? <laughs> but you were the one... Did, weren't you the one who brought the paper? Okay, whatever. And since we're down here, we might as well... Oh, there goes this dude we can talk to. Hey, Chief. Watch your step. A lot of clutter and a lot, a lot of light down here. You're looking for something in particular? Thank you for your concern, Engineer Tonio. Just passing through. There's something I need to look into. Well, keep your eyes open. People get that hurt down here, especially without a helmet. Now, keep that in mind. This is the doorway that her dad died. I don't think a helmet would have helped. This was my first time being back in this part of the inner hall since the incident. My knees went soft as I approached the bridge. I closed my eyes and took a few deep breaths. Actually, we can collect this as a clue. Well, let's try asking Tonio about the cargo lever. I have nothing to say about that right now. Okay. Alright, so since we are down here, let's see how our previous investigation results were coming along. Also, this these are two different doors of the server room. You would think that the security team would have... I know it was a two-man team down there. Number one, they should have sent more people, obviously, when someone was attacked. Number two, if they know that there's two doors, and two people go in one door looking for a suspect, what do you think the suspect will 100% of the time do? Go out the other door! <laughs> so yeah, that, that was a dumb move on their part, and they paid the price for that. I guess the Codex doesn't really have much in the way of proper security protocols. And then we have a maintenance room D. Oh, let's, let's ask about her dad. I'm sorry, but I don't know what to say about that. 
Hey, Chief. Haven't seen you in a while. How are you holding up? I'm fine, thank you. We're on my way there, at least. Is your head back to normal? I had headaches for a while, but it seems like they're gone for good now. Good. Can you tell me about our investigation that went on? Probably not. Let's go to PDA Network Terminal. Nope. Alright. Now that we've done a lot of preliminary investigations, let's interrogate our prisoners. I'm sorry, suspects. And this is not a speed run in that I could have come here with more clues. Especially for the other case going on, but I... As I said before, I am trying to walk you through the video. And to the left of the elevator, we'll enter the brig. You can never talk to this guard. And the room does change later, and the guard, I think, is a little bit awkward. Over here is particularly nothing. I don't know what this room is supposed to be. Is this an uh, execution chamber? I, I don't know. Let's start with Rose, since we know the most about her. Janitor Rose. Hello, darling. This is a big misunderstanding. There's no need to keep me locked up like this. I'm the chief of security. Please address me accordingly. Yes, of course. I'm sorry, chief. You need to tell me what happened. What were you doing in the inner hole? Well, my job. It's on my way back from a cleanup. The engineers made a real mess down there. You should have seen it. Metal shavings and oily footprints everywhere. Tell me. You were caught trying to retrieve a secret letter from a hidden wall compartment. Yes, dear. I, I was walking through the hallway and I spotted a plate that seemed a little loose. Fixing this kind of thing is part of my responsibility. I wiggled it a little bit and it just came off. There's a compartment behind it. That's where I found this piece of paper. Did you read it? I thought it was gossip, a love letter, maybe. I had no idea. Why didn't you call security? I swear that's what I would have done next. They showed up a few moments later anyway. That's all. We'll try asking about... Wall compartment? Oh, Stella, dear. I really don't know what to say to that. Okay, let's try asking. Let's, let's try softening her up. Tell me about these red roses. These are some impressive roses. I don't know how you do it. The secret ingredient is love, dear. You know anything about my dad? Speaking of which... Oh, Stella, dear. Okay. I found a message on the board in your bunk. Isaac asked you to come down into the inner hall and clean up a spill. You were in my bunk? I mean, I suppose it's okay if you need to take a look around, but you could have asked. Sorry, I'll ask next time. Did you go and clean up that spill? Yes, yes I did. See, I had a good reason to be in the inner hall B. That's when I saw the loose plate in the hallway. Why didn't you mention Isaac's message earlier? I didn't think of it. This whole ordeal has made me so nervous, dear. Well... The timing of his message does seem to line up. You found a note a short while later. See, I told you, it's just a coincidence. Then we'll go on to the next person. Technician Lewis. Technician Lewis? Come on, Stella. No need to be formal. I'm chief of security now, and this is not a private encounter. Please address me appropriately. Okay, chief. Why am I being detained? I didn't do anything. You'll be let go soon after questioning is complete. Relax. What are you talking like a robot? I'm not. Stay on topic. What were you doing in the inner hole? What kind of question is this? It's not like I'm not allowed to be there. There aren't many places on the ship where I can be alone for five goddamn minutes. What about your bunk? Come on, Lewis. What were you doing down there? That's personal, okay? Let's ask him about this necklace. You were wearing this necklace when you were apprehended. Where did you get it from? Why does it matter? That's my personal life. Please don't be that way. You know the context of our conversation and what it means. Fine, you really want to know? Engineer Isaac made it for me. We've been seeing each other lately. Engineer Isaac? I see. That's why I was going in the inner hole. He works down there, and I was going to keep him company during his shift. Was he expecting you? Yeah. Then he will corroborate what you just told me. Is he still working? As far as I know. What about him? I don't appreciate you trying to pry into my private life. You said he was at work. Where exactly can I find him? In the recycling center down in the inner hole B. You can't ask him about the wall compartment? I don't know what you mean. So, about your date. I told you everything. Stop harping on it. Anything to say about my dad? Nobody ever has anything to say about my dad. That's how little of a, a afterthought it really was. At least, that's how I feel about it. Let's ask about his mom. Okay. Let's ask about his note to his mom. Talk to your mother. She was at your bunk earlier. At my bunk? What were you doing there? My job. Since when can the crew enter people's bunk on a suspicion? Come on, Lewis. This is a little more than a suspicion. 
She was probably happy to see you. She was. Louis, she needs to go to a doctor. What are you talking about? Mom's doing fine. Then why are you hiding her at your place? I... You must have misunderstood something. You know the rules. Zena may have to move into assisted living. You mean we should lock her away? Aren't you already doing that? She would receive the care she needs and... My mom left her husband behind on Earth to be here. That's how much she believed in it. Just to be locked away with the crazies for the rest of her life? Where I can visit her twice a week. Where she can only leave if a staff member feels like accompanying her. This is how she will be repaid for giving her entire life to this mission. I'm sorry, Lewis. She has severe cognitive problems. You know how dangerous this can get for everyone aboard the ship. If she goes out unattended and... I'm looking after her. She won't leave the bunk without me. Please, Stella, don't tell anyone about this. I'll get her to a doctor if it keeps getting worse. Please don't take away the time we could spend together. You just lost your dad. You have to understand how I feel. Is this why you're communicating with these people? Because you're hoping they'll change things and protect Xena in some way. It's you, right? They've been talking to you. You know what? Fine. A few days ago, I found an anonymous letter in my bunk. Somebody must have slid it under my door while I was at work. They asked me if I was dissatisfied with the situation on the Zephyr, if I wanted to have a bigger say in how things are going. They instructed me to lean my doormat against the door in an upright position that night, as a sign that I wanted to learn more. So that's what I did. Seriously? That's treason, Lewis. What are you on about? I didn't breach the codex in any way. I just wanted to know what these guys were up to, okay? The next letter showed up in my locker at work. I was instructed to write an answer on the back and leave it in a specific place. I described the precise location of a wall in the inner hole B. That's where I sent and received the subsequent letter. An enforcer photo caught you on the way there. Yes. So you lied to me. What would you have done in my place? I'll need to take a detailed statement on this whole exchange, but right now time is running out. Do you have any idea who is sending these messages and what their goals are? No, they didn't say. My first in-person contact was going to take place tonight at the event. You mean the arrival day event at the Earth Museum that's about to start, correct? You know who exactly you're supposed to talk to? Not precisely. One of the performers. They split up the instructions across two letters, probably as a precaution. Besides the letter you found, there was another hint in the previous one. It said my contact works on a Category 2 profession. Listen, Stella, you know me. I was never going to do anything illegal. I was just curious. Investigating this kind of thing is not your job. You know you're supposed to report it to security. For all I know, you are trying to get in on a dissident movement that could jeopardize the whole mission. Dissident movement? You have no idea what they're about. Neither do I. And why did you signal to them that you were interested? You think it's so wrong what they're saying? You're part of the crew, but me? The general population barely has a right to know or decide anything. And I do. This is a mission, and we're all part of it. And who came up with that mission? A bunch of bureaucrats back on Earth that aren't even here. Some of them died years ago. And I'm tired of carrying out someone else's plans. The mission is not about your personal needs. It's about ensuring the survival of our species. That doesn't change the fact that we're the ones who should be making the rules. We spent our entire goddamn lives on this ship. I couldn't believe what he was saying. I'd known for a while that Lewis was unhappy about how certain things worked on the ship, but I'd never thought he would lose faith in the mission. I knew him better than almost anyone in the general population. If his views were this radical and I didn't notice, what about everybody else? Maybe the crew was losing touch. I knew we had to face this before it got worse. That's one case solved, but before we submit information on that, let's work on the second case. Our second job is to figure out where this paper is coming from. In our Earth, we're allowed to use paper wherever we want. This is a space station with very limited, not space station, a space ship traveling with no stops. It's not going to stop at an asteroid and mine it or anything. The, the, the resources they have are very limited um, and needs to be recycled. Meaning this paper is a valuable commodity and it must have been taken from somewhere. So now we'll ask these guys about it. But before we do that, let's go and talk to them about Xena. Sergeant, I need to tell you something about I discovered while looking into Lewis. His mother Xena is staying in his bunk. She doesn't seem to be all there. Maybe she should be evaluated by medical staff. What's wrong with her? She didn't remember things, even when we just talked about them. She's living in her son's bunk. It seemed that way. Thank you for bringing this to our attention, Chief. We'll send someone over. Thank you. All right, and then we'll also talk about... Where's... Here it is. Sources of paper. I have a question. Maybe you can help me with this, Sergeant Alder. At your service, Chief. You know where on the ship they're still using paper? Paper? That's an unexpected question. Definitely nowhere in the command area. I think it's only for educational purposes and for entertainment. I know they use it in the activities room. I'm pretty sure it's being used in several places around the public area. Definitely at the school. Does this pertain to an investigation? Yes, exactly. But it's something I'll have to take care of myself. Of course. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Thank you. I'll take a look around the public area.
there's a bug in the current version of the game. If I open a map at this point and try to warp, the game glitches out trying to figure out if I'm in the elevator or not. But the public area is just right over here, so we'll, we'll, we'll just walk on over. Let's ask Baptist about paper. Oh, apparently he has nothing to say about that. Well, they mentioned the activities room, and this is the activities room. We have a note and keypad. Taking a look at our evidence, some numbers look slightly more worn out than others. Devrin, a historian by trade, he makes sure that everything is in order at the Earth Museum in the adjacent activities room. Oh, also there's cases right here, activities room plaque. Caretaker Devrin, that's why that's why his name came up. Cases. We take a look at Paper Chase. The activities room is closed to the public. Maybe this caretaker can help me out. It's Devrin we should be looking for then, not Baptist. There's the cafe. It's not here. I think there's only one thing that really takes place in the cafe. Here's the school, and here's the teacher that was talking to us about the arrival day. Teacher Mariella, do you happen to know where I can find paper around here? I've seen it here and there around the public area. We still use that at the school. It just helps convey certain things better. Thank you. So you don't have to worry about it, okay? I'm sure you'll make an excellent contribution to the mission. In fact, you're already doing so every day. Okay. Good. Then get back out there whenever you're ready. Hey, Stella. Always working, huh? Yeah, well, I saw Darren walk away crying, so I had a little chat with him. Mariola told him the other day that if his bad performance at school continued, he would bring no merit to the mission. Sheesh. When he heard her speech just now, he projected some of it onto himself. I see. It's very nice of you to cheer him up. I consider it part of my job as a teacher. Anyway, that rival day event is starting soon. Until then, I'll be at the cafe in case you want to join me. I need to get out of here. Sorry. Let's chat upstairs. Sure, I understand. Recycler, paper leftovers, classes timetable. She's waiting for us up at the cafe, but we're still looking for Devrin. Paper leftovers. Oh, Chief, hi! The Art Institute is already closed for today, but feel free to look around our Arrival Day exposition if you like. I'll stay here for a while anyway. No plans for Arrival Day later? No, it's just... I've been a little introspective lately. Introspective? Everything alright? I've been helping a lot with the Arrival Day preparations like every year, and it's made me think about my role here. Maybe you're not the right person to ask this, but... Ask what? What would you say is the role of art in society, and by extension the role of an artist? I'm not sure I understand the question. I mean, is art there to uphold the system it exists in, or to challenge it? Depends on the system, wouldn't you say? If it's good, art should help uphold it. If it's bad, art should be critical of it. That's a diplomatic response, but is the system ever just good or bad? I need to think about it some more. Hey, I've been meaning to ask you, how's Chi-Chi doing? She's back to her own self. Thank you for asking. It's good to hear. Worrying about your pet is the worst. Yeah, I'm glad that's over. Happy arrival day. Happy arrival day. Tell me about Chi-Chi. You know anything about paper around here? Hey, one question. I saw a stack of paper on the table over there. Oh yeah, we use it in our art club. I know it's old fashioned. The blank sheets on the table are what's left over this week. Can I ask you a few questions about the paper you use here? Of course. How do you get your paper? Our supplies are refilled through the distribution system at the start of each week. We always have 750 grams of paper, mostly for our art club sessions. Do you have more paper when there's leftovers from the previous week? No, refills are always up to the same fixed amount. I have another question. What happens to the used paper? The club members can take photos of their work with their PDAs if they want, but at the end of each week, I throw the sheets into the recycler over there. I just did it again today. Are you ever allowed to take paper home? No, paper is strictly a public resource. Every used sheet has to be recycled. Would you notice if someone broke the rules and took a sheet or two home? Well, I can't have an eye on everyone all the time, but I made the rules very clear. 
I'd be surprised if someone deliberately broke them. Why do you ask? It might be related to a case I'm working on. That's all. There are res Oh. I saw it just as we left. There's a recycler right here in the corner. I was thinking it was by, by the door, but I, I couldn't find it. I didn't visually see it. All right, that's everything, but we need to find Devrin. If I remember right, he's in the residential area, actually. But that might be later on in the story. Right, so Devrin is just hanging out over here. Way, way at the other end. And yes, if this were a proper speed run, we would have talked to him earlier. But I don't want to throw too many clues at you all at once and not be able to make a valid point. So we've already investigated the whole who was the paper addressed to. Let's figure out where this paper came from. Cheech has nothing to say, so we'll talk to him. Chief, what a surprise. Good evening, Devrin. Oh, Shan. Hey, Stella. Did I see you to swing by on arrival day. Are you coming to our event at the Earth Museum later? It was all Oceana. She planned and executed the whole thing. Dad. You did. You're always so humble. The installation is about uh, the mission. About people's jobs on the Zephyr and USD. Oh, that was a weird audio skip there. That was not an edit. <laughs> Yes, right, right. You should come. Let's swing by. We look forward to seeing you there. Dad, we should soon get going ourselves. Well, tell, you, tell me about that keypad. Is there any way I can get into the activities room right now? I know it's closed, but I'd like to take a look around for an investigation. Investigation? I hope there isn't a problem with the room. I assure you that we follow all the protocols very carefully. Don't worry, it's not about you or the activities room. I can't disclose any details at this point. Well, that's a relief. If you need to take a look around, I'm certainly happy to help. There's a keypad that opens the door. The code is my year of birth, 2480. Great, thank you. Tell me about paper. Can I ask you something, Caretaker Devon? Do you know where I can find paper on the ship? You mean real paper? I think it's used in various places across the public area. We have some of the activities room right now. Some activities involve drawing or writing with pencils. It's part of the current theme, or how things were done back on Earth. People can take scans home, of course. The used paper goes into the recycler when the week is over. Do you know how much paper is left today when you close it for the week? Ugh, no idea, to be honest. You'd have to need to take a look at the remaining sheets in the activities room. Would you notice if anyone took a piece of paper with them? I probably wouldn't. I'm there to supervise whenever it's open, but it's a big place, and there's always a lot going on. I don't think anyone would break the rules. I don't see why they would. How much paper do you have at your disposal every week? Let me think. I think it's refilled to 750 grams at the start of the week. Thank you for your help. And we can ask them about recycling. Can you tell me anything about the recyclers around the public area? Rita on the display doesn't give me much to work with. All I know is the recycled materials end up in the recycling room down in the inner hole B. If you're looking for more data on the recycled materials, you'll probably find it there. Okay. And let's see here. We might be to ask him about maybe the plaque? Nope. Let me video edit our way to the public area. We are now back. Let's go ahead and chat with the person in the cafe. Got a few more leads to go on. Oops, wrong button. I guess we could start by talking about paper. Hey, one question. I saw a stack of paper on the classroom table. Yes, we sometimes use paper in our classes. Why do you ask? It's for something I'm investigating. Your paper supplies are delivered at the start of the week, correct? Yes, exactly. How much paper do you have at your disposal every week? Our stack always gets refilled to 1,200 grams. And people aren't allowed to take any paper home, right? No, paper is strictly a public resource. I put the used sheets into the recycler at the end of the week. Would you notice if someone took a sheet or two home? I don't know why anyone would do that. The rules are very clear. I'm sure they are, but would you notice if someone broke them? I suppose it's possible that someone slipped a sheet into their pocket while I wasn't watching. Alright, thank you for your help. Stella, good to see you. Sorry I took off so quickly earlier. How are you? I'm good. Come on, I've known you long enough. What's the matter? I just miss my dad, you know? I know how much you've always looked up to him. I can only imagine how hard it is for you to find your footing again, but I know you will. Yeah, you're probably alright. As always. Thank you. Always. She has nothing to say about the recycler or paper leftovers. Didn't we talk about that already? Okay. Okay, right across the way from here is the activities room, which we now have access to. He said 2048. The pin number stuff here is ridiculous. You can't type it in or anything, and there are later times in the game where you want to type stuff in. It's all cyclic, like a, a padlock. We have to press E on this and then go up to two, 
Press E again to unlock it and be able to move on to the next number. And even then, this is not a real button. Pressing S down here just goes to submit. <sighs> there, there's just so much that's unfortunately wrong with this section here. But I mean, I, I, I know how to use it. I just think that this was completely needless. Paper leftovers. There we go. I was trying to make her hover over it. Recycler. And that's it. I think that's everything that we can find in this area. The reason why we're keeping track of the paper leftovers is our character is writing down how much paper is in there. So now we know how much each paper each place has as terms of paper, and we need to figure out how much each place can get in terms of paper. Let's take a look at our current notes. So the activities room has 490 grams of paper left at the end of the week. The art institute has 495 and the school has 940. Okay. That's the recruit paper chase. Ava tells us that, they, okay, on one side, the school gets 1,200, the art institute gets 750, and the activities room gets 750. All right. Those are our clues. Now we need to figure out how much of this is being sent to the recycler, and then if there's any, I don't know if all stores call it, but a store may call it shrinkage, is how much uh, stock is depleted. Back to the basement we go. Really, it's called the inner hole, but I'm never going to remember that name. I just call it the basement. We can also take a look at the server room. See if there's anything new there. Maybe anything we missed. But it's been... It wasn't one day after. I don't know how long it's been, but... It's uh, been, we'll say, a couple weeks since your character's father's death. Nothing in that area. Nothing for us to investigate. I guess the deck just gets swept under the rug, or under the paper, as it were. Let's try asking this guy about the wall compartment. Nope. Alright, we need the recycler. Okay, we'll take care of old business first. We'll show him Lewis's necklace. What about it? Have you seen it before? I have. I made it from recycled materials and gave it to Lewis. Why? Why? Come on, Chief. Engineer Isaac, were you going to meet Lewis here today? Uh, what kind of question is this? I don't mean to be indiscreet. It's strictly about a matter I'm investigating. I don't see why that would be important for your investigation, but no, we weren't going to meet today. It is true we've been seeing each other. Did he tell you that? He did. I see. So we can also follow up with the whole Lewis Day thing, but that's, and that is older news. You probably would have come here naturally. I say it's older news because his character dialogue will break when we show up with this data, but the game keeps track of what information you've collected, so we actually will head back to Lewis and tell him that we've caught him in his alibi. Uh, but the fact that we found Xena busted the whole case wide open. Still, I think he would have naturally found that faster than he would have found the whole Lewis thing. Now, what really came down here for was talk about recycling. Let's try asking about sources of paper in case he has... I'm looking for places on this ship that use paper. You can probably help me with this, right? Usage of paper is pretty limited, whereas I know there are only three places on the ship that have any. All in the public area. The activities room, the school, and the art institute. All in the public area. Can I ask you a few questions about the paper? Sure. Tell me, is there a way to check how much paper was recycled this week? Yeah, the machine by the entrance logs today's input. A lot of the stuff is recycled at the end of the week, meaning today. Does it break down the materials by the recycler it was thrown in? No, it's prohibited for privacy reasons. My engineering unit submitted several requests to the ethics community about changing it. People would be more careful with their resources if we were able to see how much they were wasting. Thank you. Tell me, were there any significant discrepancies later, like lost paper that wasn't accounted for? Someone's stealing stuff again? Give me a second, I'll check the stats. 
No significant losses, but some small amounts of paper have gone missing over the last few months. The system didn't issue any warnings because the quantities are negligible. Nothing is recycled at 100% efficiency. Runs of clothes come loose, a piece of plastic packaging is torn off. This is a little unusual, though. It happens very consistently. For how long has this been happening? For six months now. Thank you. That's all for now. You tell me anything about recyclers. That's one of the recyclers from upstairs. All their input ends up right here. The machine by the door tells you what was recycled at what time today. It should be a lot today since it's the end of the week. Feel free to have a look if you want. We have nothing to say about paper leftovers. And we need to look at the panel. Okay. With this new evidence of recycling times. At 5.05, paper was recycled. At 6.02, paper was recycled. And at 6.04, paper was recycled. Now with this new evidence, we'll head back and talk to people about when things were recycled and see if we can narrow anything down. First, we'll start with her since she's nearest us. Do you remember when you recycled this week's used paper today? Not exactly, sorry. Sometime shortly after classes ended. Okay, and classes would have ended. Well, I guess she doesn't have information on that. Classes would have ended after five. So with this information, this is the school. That's 260 that is, has been recycled. We'll head over to the art room. Do you by any chance remember when you put the used paper into the recycler today? I always do it after a week's final art club session. Class was a little shorter today because of the festivities. We finished up around 6, but I really can't tell you the exact time. Thank you. And then one last person to question. We'll question the... Uh, we'll question Devrin, the caretaker of the activities room. Do you put used paper in your tooth recycler in the activities room today? If so, do you remember when? I did get rid of this week's used supply, right after we closed, at around 6 o'clock. Any chance you remember the exact time? Like I said, it must have been around 6, maybe a little later. Okay, we have all of the information needed to solve this case, and I'm going to let you pause here if you want to try to solve it yourself. We have information on the paper chase. Let's scroll up. The school, 1,200 grams. The activities room and the arts institute, 750 grams. If you're wanting to solve this, write those down. Go to evidence. The amount of paper that was left over in these places, the school, 940 grams. The Arts Institute, 495 grams. The Activities Room, 490 grams. Times things were recycled. The school recycled it after class, which would have ended at five. Paper, 260 grams. We can see it here, right there, school ends at five. Then we can also see that the Art Institute and the Activities Room both recycled sometime around six, with the exact same amount, 255 grams. We need to figure out where the paper is missing. If you haven't reached a conclusion yet, we'll give you three more seconds, and then we'll give you the answer. Three, two, one. The answer is the activities room. If we take a look at this information, both the activities room and the art institute get 750 grams each week, so they are the same amount. Okay. If we take a look at how much is left over, though, the art institute and the activities room, the activities room is missing five grams. Well, why is it missing? Because they both recycled, although we didn't know exactly what time, this is the art or activities. This is the art or activities. Doesn't matter which one we plug in for this. Recycled it. It is the same amount. 255. With that in mind, the activities room is missing 5 grams. Let's return to the brig and talk to Lewis. Now that we've knocked his alibi out of the park. New message, Isaac. Hey chief, I hope Lewis isn't in some kind of trouble. It's true he was down with here with me a few times in the past, just not today. I don't really want him to think I ratted him out or anything. We received new information about Lewis's date. Although we tried asking about this before, it didn't get us anywhere. Let's try this now. I talked to Isaac. First time he heard of your supposed date this afternoon. There was no date. I made it up, I'm sorry. That's it. That's all we can get from this. There's a scorecard at the end of this. 
the game will keep track of our progress. We don't actually have to return to the security office to do this, but it just feels right. For the case, number one. Paper chase. Where was the paper taken from? It was taken from the activities room, which is the puzzle-looking thing. The, okay, the, the key structure for this is a little weird. If I press E here, it, it then jumps down, down to the answers. I think it should just hover over Submit. Why would you ever... I mean, I guess if you pick the wrong thing. It's, it is weird. You have to press down to get to this next thing. I mentioned this in case the developer watches these. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they leave comments, and it's always appreciated. Right, we submitted the paper chase, and then we get a message from our captain. Read that. Chief, I saw you submitted some first results. Please refrain from confronting any potential suspects with your findings for now. Come to my office as soon as you're done with the second case. This is what she would say as a generic message, no matter which case you solved and whether or not you solved it correctly. <laughs> and solved the second case, the recruit. Who was the letter addressed to? It was addressed to Lewis. He did not have a proper alibi in the location, and, and in addition to that, he also confessed. Now that I submitted both cases, I should report to Captain Talia to prepare for our operation at the Earth Museum. Captain wants to see us, so let's oblige. I would like it if the fast travel actually just directly took you to the place. If I tried to fast travel now, it would actually take me further from where I was. Oops, that's not the captain's office. That's the navigation deck. Chief, I saw you submitted your results. The origin of the paper will have to wait. First, need to focus on the meeting at the Rival Day event that was mentioned in the letter. The Earth Museum just opened its doors, and the event is about to start. You suspect that the letter was addressed to Lewis after all. Good work. We'll bog up and send him in once you give us the go-ahead. Now, listen closely. There will be people around the museum dressed in their work attire as part of the event. One of them must be the contact mentioned in the letter. Go to the event, have another look at everything we found out, and tell us who. As soon as you've submitted your conclusions, we'll send the suspect in to talk to them and get more information. Keep your distance from that point on. Sergeant Alderick will be talking to you through all of it, but don't let people see your earpiece. If you arouse suspicion, or if our suspect talks to the wrong person, we might lose our chance to find out who is behind all this. Understood, Captain. Good luck, Chief. We can also... Let's try asking her about... Xena. Chief, I have something to report about Technician Xena. She seems to have some mental issues. This sounds like something you should discuss with your sergeants if you want something to be done. I see. Will do. Which we already took care of. Do you have any use whatsoever? I have nothing to say about that right now. We need to head to the arrival day. Let's go ahead and implement fast travel. Happy arrival day! Oh, that was just a uh, move up. I thought that person I could talk to him. We're standing by next door, Chief. I hope you can hear me all right over the music. We assume that the contact is one of the people in work attire. We prepared some kind of presentation. Let's try to make our move before it starts. Go over all the information you've gathered to find out which of the participants our suspect is supposed to talk to. If you're not sure yet, talk to them and see if that narrows it down somehow. But be careful not to blow your cover. If they suspect we're onto them, they might no longer respond to the code word. Good luck, Chief. Once you submitted the file, we'll send the suspect in. You got this, Stell. I, I, I should probably stop walking with the camera pans, but I, I'm so used to moving forward when the game lets me. Stella! That's a nice surprise. I didn't expect to see you here. Oh, you know, I thought it sounded interesting. That means a lot coming from an introvert like you. The event is about to start. It's all about how jobs on the Zephyr will be useful in your SD, and how some will transform. Our presenters are dressed in their work attire already. Feel free to ask them anything you want. We also prepared this infographic right there with more information on the topic. We don't have time for this, Chief. Try to cut it short. I will. Check it out, I mean. Hope you have a good time. Happy Arrival Day. Happy Arrival Day. She has nothing to say about the infographic. Okay. Evening, Chief. Sorry, I need to practice my speech right now. I'm very nervous. As a biologist, I not only do take care of 
I do not take care only care of. I do not only take care of. Uh, that's it. Have you tell me about anything with the infographic? Nope. Programmer Aaron, you're part of the event as well? Yeah, I volunteered to talk about some programming challenges that will face us once we approach, you know, the real arrival day. Oh, well, not us, us. Or like my future kids, future kid. But it's important that I have an understanding of it today. Won't well, technology change a fair bit over the next 100 years? It does all the time, but I keep up with Earth's yearly updates. Just recently started working my way through some literature they sent us with this year's arrival day package. I see, it's nice that you're so passionate about it. Dear visitors, thank you so much for coming to the Earth Museum on this very special arrival day. We have invited important people from across the population to share insights into their jobs and the role they play in the mission. I would fill you with the same pride and determination that my daughter felt when putting it all together. The presentation will begin shortly. In the meantime, feel free to chat and mingle with each other and our exciting volunteers. Chief, come to hear about medical challenges that await us on the new planet? You won't believe the number of unexpected things that could wipe us out once we make contact with an entirely new ecosystem. We've never had an opportunity to build up an immunity to any of it. And conversely, we may just bring the next Black Death to USD animal and plant population. Isn't that motivating? Good evening, Historian Baptist. Chief, I hope you're going to enjoy this little presentation we put together for tonight. I'll briefly talk about us historians and our role in documenting the first steps our species will ever take on an exoplanet. It's only a century away, which is basically tomorrow in the grand scheme of things. Let me read a little excerpt from my script. Oh, that's okay, thank you. I'll hear it all in a minute anyway. You have nothing to say. Who are you? You are Deverin. Okay. Tell me about this place. Oh, Chief, I don't know what to say about that. Engineer Gerardo. Now that's an outfit I've never seen before. <laughs> you can't see it because a person's standing in the way. That's no surprise. I don't often have an opportunity to put it on. It's designed for the vacuum of space. Most often put it on in the outer hole, but I have engaged in some rare EVA as well. Due to my special training, I'm often referred to as an astronaut here on the ship. But to everybody back on Earth, we're all technically astronauts here. Fancy seeing you here, Chief. Came to learn something about our future jobs. Well, human reproduction sounds interesting. We aren't very involved with the fun part, I'm sorry to say. But if you have questions about concocting fetuses from two genetic donors and raising them in an artificial womb, being in space makes it a little harder, but not all that much as long as we have artificial gravity. And that's it. If there's anything for us to scan or worry about. Let's take a look at our information for this case. Tonight's representation at the Earth Museum features some members of the population dressed in their work attire for some sort of presentation. The contact must be one of them. Audrey told me to go over the information I have so far and talk to participants to find out more if necessary. I have to be careful not to blow my cover. If we go to the destroyed letter, this is information we get as a result of interrogating Lewis, which clears up a great deal of information for us. In a previous letter from the mysterious group, Lewis was given another piece of instruction for the arrival day festivities at the Earth Museum. It said something like, your contact at the event works in a Category 2 profession. Because Lewis has since destroyed the letter, this information is based solely on the claims he made during his confession. Okay, let's take a look at the infographic USD. Category 1 jobs, like historians and artists, contribute intangibly to social cohesion on the Zephyr and USD as they have since ancient times on Earth. Category 2 jobs include engineers and programmers, revolve around software and hardware use, with some machines and the Zephyr's inner hull still waiting to prove their usefulness on the planetary surface. Alright, we do happen to have one programmer and one engineer, so that narrows down our subjects quite a bit. Or sus suspects, not subjects. Category 3 jobs such as doctors and reproductionists are essential everywhere, but their focus will shift once planet side. Okay. Let's take a look. We have the engineer here. An engineering specialist trained to perform EVA and work in zero-G environments. And then we have Aaron. Friendly and enthusiastic guy who works in the network area in the inner hole. So it's one of these two. And the other thing, if you remember, is our target has three stripes on their arm. Let's take a look at the first guy we had. He's wearing black sleeves and he's got two gray stripes on his arm. Over here we have a guy with what looks like it could be either two gold stripes or three black stripes, depending on which way you want to look at. Since his sleeve is golden and his other arm is just complete gold, we're going to assume it's a gold arm with three black stripes. This is our target. Go to cases and submit this. I can just figure out my way around this uh, interface. Our 
Report received. Looks like you've identified a possible contact. We'll send our suspect in to strike up a conversation. Step away to give them some privacy, but keep an eye out for- Sergeant, you're cutting out. Sergeant? Everybody, stay calm. I'm sure it's just a- What? Where am I? Chief, good to have you back. How do you feel? Dr. Destina, my head hurts. What happened? The ring had a malfunction and you were flung into the wall, like almost everyone. But you were lucky. No concussions or anything. What are you saying? Is the ship alright? Not sure. We're still waiting for an official statement from the captain. It was like the power suddenly went out and then the whole ship rebooted. What's the situation? How serious are people's injuries? We can barely keep up, to be honest. Many people were hurt. Some are in critical condition. And... Not everyone made it. Who? Mina, Federico, Nadia, and Elias so far. Secretary Elias? So sorry. We did what we could. Some people are still in critical condition and a few are missing. How long was I out? They brought you in about eight hours ago. I have to go to the bridge, talk to the captain. From a medical perspective, it would make sense if you... I don't have time to rest. I need to find out what happened. As soon as I was back on my feet, I checked my PDA and found a message from the captain. She wanted me to come see her on the bridge. I decided to take the long way around the ring and assess the damage on my way. Broken objects were scattered everywhere. Some walls were covered in fresh dents and splattered liquids. A large chunk of the population had been injured. Once or twice I believed to catch someone glancing at me. I was ashamed that I hadn't been around to help everyone right after the incident. I wanted to say something to the people, but instead I lowered my head and picked up the pace. My sense of balance was off. I tripped and almost fell multiple times. Finally, I made it to the bridge and, to my relief, immediately spotted my sergeants and the captain in relatively good shape. Chief, Captain Talia, Sergeants, what happened? We are still evaluating the situation. Something caused a power outage across the entire ship. This caused the ring to slow down and stop temporarily. It spun back up within a less than a minute, but the resulting force was massive. It left many injured and some dead. However, the ship itself does not seem to have sustained any critical damage. There are some issues, however. For one, the navigation system isn't back online. The navigators are working on it. The major water line was damaged, flooding the inner hull sections C and D. We've had to seal them off until the engineers report back. We don't know what caused the power outage. We need answers fast so I can address the population. I'm counting on you to find them, Chief. With all due respect, Captain, this sounds like a rather technical question. The engineers are working out the technical side of things. However, we cannot rule out foul play. Do you really think someone would? That's what I want you to find out. Sergeant Paul, you already collected some relevant information? Yes, Captain. There are four power nodes on the ship, one in each section of the inner hull. Chief, you have been granted clearance to enter these rooms. However, as the captain mentioned, inner hull C and D are currently inaccessible. The shipwide outage was actually a chain reaction originated at one of the four nodes. We can find out which power node was the first to go out. We were a lot closer to identifying the cause of the outage. Got it. One more thing, according to our logs, the shipwide alarm went off after the two first nodes failed. Maybe this can help us reconstruct the timeline. So what you're saying is, two nodes went out, then the alarm started, and lastly the other two nodes failed. Correct, but none of them went out at the exact same time. It all happened in succession. That's all we know so far. But our sting operation was cut short before the incident. There is no doubt that Engineer Lewis was exchanging these suspicious letters. He was interrogated again by enforcers while you were incapacitated. It seemed like he truly doesn't know anything relevant yet, as his first in-person contact was yet to take place. We place him back in the brig for the time being. And about the contact at the event, since that you are right about Engineer Geraldo, he disappeared in the turmoil and hasn't resurfaced yet. Maybe he decided to go into hiding after seeing our presence at the Earth Museum. The enforcers are out looking for him. If there's nothing else, you should get to work now. There is something, Captain. I'm so sorry about Secretary Elias. He was a good man. Thank you. He was. Dismissed. Alright, just like the father, Elias was there just to die. He had no real interactions that we could think of. Can we even bring him up in conversation? It's uh, Simon, Lewis, there's Elias. 
Nope. <laughs> Sounds like something we need to figure out for ourselves. Okay. We also got some comms. Lots of them. Geraldo. I saw you at the event, and I just knew you got on my trail somehow. I'm sorry I can't take part in the rescue and cleanup efforts that are probably ongoing right now. Instead, it would be best if I laid low for a little while. When we see each other again, you will have to pick a side. It'll be the first choice in your life you actually get to make for yourself. Think about it. You reported my mom to security? Are you mental? They stuffed her in the psych ward right away. The hell did you expect to happen? Fix this. So the log we've already had. All logs happen here as well as any PDA messages, but at least we can tell them which ones are our messages that we didn't initiate conversation. The conversation ones we will have covered together as a view as creator and viewer. These are ones that just popped up during the event. Are you okay? What the hell happened? I'm outside my bunk right now. Please come see me if you can. Stealth. Please contact me as soon as you're away. You were covered in blood and unresponsive when we found you at the Earth Museum. Dr. Yaha assured me you'd be fine, but I'm really worried. Needless to say, our sting operation was unsuccessful. And this was, again, during the event or cutscene, so we would never have had time to tell talk to him about this specifically. Alright, so we have information from Geraldo. Let's see if we can tell anybody. Nope, not her. Not her. Or him. Okay. Anything else? I guess we could try asking about these power nodes. Okay, no information from either of these guys. Over here is just a room. I don't think we will ever really have reason to head this way as part of our gameplay, but the ending will transpire there. It's a navigation room. It's locked off to us. We're gonna go ahead to the brig first. I'm not gonna apologize for sending Xena to the psych ward. Stella, what the hell is going on? Lewis, why did you throw me back in here? Lewis, I had nothing to do with that decision. I got knocked out cold. I know, I was there. I'm glad you're back up on your feet, but I want to see what's going on out there. I want to help. You're the first person to come in here today. Can you please let me out? I won't go against my sergeants on this. I know you are cooperating, but this whole ordeal is far from resolved. Fine, can I at least get my rations? I'm starving. Of course, I'm sorry they're keeping you waiting. It's not going on. I'm putting a notice out right away. Have you heard from Xena? They told me she's okay. Good. Lewis, I need you to stay put here. We're working things out as fast as possible. If you know anything that could speed up our investigation, now's the time to tell me. I told you everything. Okay, uh, there's a guard right here. You have no real need to tell the security chief that you haven't had your food. Also, the, her, the guard's chair has been thrown to the side, but she's still sitting there. I have so many complications with how the security team here is run. <laughs> Realistically, I think the developer is meant to remove this guard, but you would never leave the prisoners unattended. Aaron, don't touch that. He said we we're picking everything up from the floor. Not the cut cables. You get yourself electrocuted. Can I help you, Chief? Uh, actually, you can help me. Darren, the Chief says she's gonna lock you away if you touch that again. Uh-uh. I... She did. Some help we are. We should go back to the lab soon. On the other hand, Darren hasn't been this excited about a task in a while. So in my bogus run where I was trying to just bulldoze through the game with the worst options possible, even though this place is completely wrecked, if you hadn't had the 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 administrator or principal or whoever she is with the cheese wedge hat give her lecture, she'll give it in the midst of all this ruin and destruction. <laughs> There's nothing for us in here. The place is actually completely wrecked, and the game does a lot of effort into showing you each room has been damaged. I think that's really good, especially with the way that the game uh, intentionally tries to put a lot of effort into its art style. That means that it's not only is it good art with one condition of ship, but it's good art when it's both the, the before and after. However, as you might have noticed when you're entering and leaving rooms, there's people walking around and then suddenly they vanish. Our job is really over there, but let's go and take a look at the residential area. One of our emails did say that they're standing in front of their bunk. So let's see if we can find that person. Stella, I'm so glad to see you're up on your feet again. I heard you were at the hospital. 
Just some scratches and a headache, it seems. I'm glad to see you're right, too. The same can't be said about my bunk, unfortunately. Looks like a pipe burst during the incident. I found it completely flooded when I got here. That sucks. Does help on the way? I'm waiting for Engineer Tonio, but apparently he's fixing something at the Earth Museum first. Should I tell him it's urgent when I see him? Thank you, but it won't make a difference. Everything's drenched anyway. Alright. I have to get back to work. There's a million things going on right now. Of course. At least you can do something about the situation, it seems. I feel a little useless right now. Can't really fix the ship or the people. As soon as I let Tony into my bunk, I'll go and look for an opportunity to help him clean up. You do something important every day, teaching the youth. Don't worry, if you say so. We all know humans have destroyed their planet in a number of ways, which is why we set out to destroy a brand new one. One of those ways being the climate catastrophe we've all heard so much about, but how many of you have actually read through Earth's material and its history? Another drunken public history lesson? Well, I have read everything on the subject, including the stuff between the lines. One of the biggest lies ever told to the people of Earth was that each of them was personally responsible for protecting their planet. I mean, this was technically true, just not in the way people were led to believe. The powers that be convinced everyone that they had to adjust their personal lifestyles to protect Earth's fragile ecosystem. But it was just a diversion from everyone's real responsibility, holding the powers that be responsible instead. No amount of individual action could put a dent in the problem. Pushing for systemic change was the only real way to avoid the crisis. But individual action offered people an out, the illusion of being part of the solution and not the problem. Not only did it provide them with a clean conscience, but also a reason to feel superior to their neighbor who didn't do as much. Divide and conquer, all part of the plan hatched by those in power. You know, those few who could actually affect change, if only they didn't profit way too much off the status quo. But I guess people on Earth at least get some voting rights along with all their supposed responsibilities. Thank you for this fascinating look into Earth's history, Michio. Now if you could get off that counter before you fall and get hurt. Is that a threat, Chief? Of course not. Being concerned for your safety is quite literally my job. Sounds more like your job is to quite literally control me. Fine. Do what you want. If you fall in your thick skull and end up wasting our medical resource, then what, Chief? We're now headed to the hospital for the first time in the game. Action. I barely dare ask, but did the vats sustain any damage? Get a close call in here, Chief. A couple of them, actually. As you can see, a few vats were toppled over and cracked open. The fetus weren't injured by the initial fall, but they can't survive for long in an empty vat. Luckily, I made it back here within minutes of the incident. The nutrition solution was already spreading all over the floor, and I sprung into action. It seems like I was able to transfer all fetuses to intact vats in time. They're all in stable condition now. I just hope they didn't get contaminated with anything dangerous in the process. You're a hero, you do you know that? Just doing my part. We create all these fetuses. That makes it our job to protect them with all we got. We expect them to serve the mission one day. We need to serve them now. True. This upcoming decision is probably the only one I had any trouble with whatsoever, mentally, because I'm trying to figure out what the game's trying to get to here. Please, Destina. I'm sorry, I can't. Our resources are stretched too thin already. We can't help with your pet when human lives are on the line. It's not just a pet to me, he's family. Sully, you have to back me up here, I need medicine for Kimi. The codex states clearly that our medicine is only meant for humans in the first place. Be grateful for the exceptions we made in the past, we cannot afford to make another one today. Justina, you should- Okay. The reason why I hesitate on this, first off, yes, I would feel that human lives are more important. However, number one, I don't actually know what kind of medicine this is. If it's so important and so critical, why isn't a doctor needing to administer it herself? This makes it sound like this is some sort of injectable or pill form. I don't know. Second, the game gives you no indication of how much medicine we actually have in stock. And we're supposed to require two more generations to go through space to reach our destination. Third, this is a once in a lifetime, hopefully, disaster that has happened to the ship. I'm going to assume that it's okay to give them medicine, but if medicines were really as stretched thin as the game suggests it might be, I would say follow the codex and don't do it. But I see no reason why we don't have enough medicine on hand. Destina, you should give her the medicine, please. 
Thank you. Thank you. Fine, but you're bearing the consequences if we run out, Chief. Go pick them up at the front desk, Leona. I have to get back to work. Okay, thank you so much. Leona is the lady from the art room. Excuse me, can I ask you something? Yes, of course. Are you the chief? Oh, uh, yes, I am. And you're Elliot, right? Eric's son. That's so cool that you're the chief. I want to be chief someday. Well, can I? If we were to take a look at Elliot's dossier, which I think is only shown here at this time, it would say that he's going to be an engineer. I don't know if he's the biological child of the parrot that's taking care of him, or if these are just a communal baby reproduction vet machine, and you just get whoever they're designing to be in that occupation. The game doesn't really lead us into that information anywhere that I've seen, but he is listed as an engineer. However, we're just going to go ahead and say with... Who knows? You never know what the future brings. Maybe you'll get your chance to be chief someday. What are you doing here anyway, Elliot? Did you get hurt? Because that thing with the lights went out? No, I only have some scratches. I need to see Dr. Yaha because of my condition. Your condition? She gives me my medicine every other day, or else I can't breathe right. Oh, sorry to hear that. It's okay, she always tells me a new story so it doesn't get boring. On that note, she's waiting for you in the examination room. Okay, goodbye, Chief. Poor boy. What's his diagnosis exactly, if I may ask? It's a complex problem we didn't really have back on Earth. You'll probably be fine in a planetary atmosphere. It's a genetic disease we dubbed interstellar dystrophy. A handful of people on the ship are affected. Is there nothing we can do? I'm afraid not. We tried everything we could think of. We were hoping for some breakthrough research from Earth in this year's arrival day transmission, but we were disappointed. Has nothing to say about Elliot. Engineer Tian. Oh, Chief. How do you feel? I had better days for sure. I was at work when the ring slammed me into the wall and I blacked out. Did it really come to a full stop? We get back down to the power node as soon as I can to run some diagnostics. You have an idea what happened? That's what I'm trying to find out. You haven't heard anything about Arjun, have you? No. What do you mean? I think I saw him wheel him into the, one of those rooms over there earlier. He seemed really hurt. But I'm not completely sure. I was still a little out of it. I'll see if I can find him. One more thing. I believe that some power nodes in the inner hole are manned and some are unmanned. Correct. I'm working B, and D is Arjun's. A and C are unmanned. Does it make any difference I should be aware of? Only that unmanned nodes provide a readout of recent activity. Arjun and I can tell you what went down in the other two. Can I find Engineer Arjun here at the hospital as well? I think I saw him earlier with a lot of blood on his face. Should ask a doctor where they brought him. Excuse me, is Engineer Arjun somewhere at the hospital right now? I really need to talk to him about a case. Yes, but he's over in the intensive care room. Can't just wait. He's in stable condition, but he should rest. I'm afraid it's urgent. Fine, but please keep it short. I'm unlocking the room for you. I will. Thank you. Let's ask him about the power node. Excuse my ignorance, but what exactly are power nodes anyway? Basically, they distribute electricity throughout the ship, each responsible for its own segment of the ring. There are four rooms we call power nodes, even though technically a node is the equipment inside one such room, its main component being the rod in the center. They're located in the inner hole, but I heard that nodes C and D are currently inaccessible due to flooding. Nodes B and D are manually maintained and monitored by an engineer, whereas nodes A and C are unmanned. Do you think I'll be chief one day? I have nothing to say about that right now. Consultation room. Is that you, Doc? No, it's Chief Stella. Chief. Sorry, I can't see all that well right now. That's alright. I hope your eye is back to normal soon. So do I. Doc is not so sure. Have you seen my colleague Tion since this incident? He was working at Power Node B when it happened. Yeah, he's being treated right outside in the hallway. Seems to be in okay condition. That's good to hear. That's me. Nothing to say about Power Node D. How about C? Really, you have nothing to say about any of the power nodes? And I don't have A or B, so I can't ask about that. It feels strange I'm not allowed to ask about power right now, but okay.
I get that I haven't been to the power nodes yet, and I can present evidence. It just feels strange. I should be able to ask him something about it right now. I was just gonna tell you that Arjun is fine, but okay. And then this way will lead to the command deck. Where we start the game. We live on floor three, so we'll head to our bunk first. Chi Chi? Chi Chi! Looks like she ran away again. Maybe the door was open during the incident. She's probably really scared. I hope she's alright. I have to keep an eye out and bring her back. So she's in various parts of the ship. You just have to trigger all of the events. Some say something like six events or something. We're gonna trigger her now. Chi-Chi, there you are. Come here, girl. What's the matter? Where are you going? Great. She must be really scared. I'll run into her again. It's probably going to take a few attempts to calm her down. Okay, another time we'll meet Chi-Chi is in front of the brig. Chi-Chi, why'd you run away from me? Come here, I'll bring you back home. Chi-Chi, wait! Damn it! Next time. Head to the basement. We find out our clues. We'll also meet Chi-Chi down here. This is one of the leak rooms, we'll never get to enter it. Let's see how the engineers are doing. Programming error. Everything alright down here? The network area sustained minimum damage from the outage, so that's good. But our colleagues in the power nodes were both brought to the hospital. Couldn't reach either of them. Seems like they don't have access to their PDAs. I hope they'll recover soon. I'm sure they will. Everybody seems to be really tight down here. We've all pulled each other out of various dangerous places by the legs at some point. I see. That tends to bond people. Agent Ferret, what's the status down here? Actually, we got through the power outage more or less unscathed here in the network area. It took a while for everything to boot back up, but it seems operational. We're still running diagnostics, but it's looking good. Since like Arjun and Tion get hurt, though. I heard. I'm sorry. There's power room A. Remember, our objective is to find out which one stopped first. Our right, node A log. Okay. I guess that's the only clue. I get the two power rooms mixed up. PG, stop! This one's on me. I definitely scared her away. I need to take a different approach next time. Navigator Noella, Engineer Eric, what are two of you doing down here? Hey Chief, just trying to get to the bottom of a problem with the navigation. The system isn't letting us do things we should be able to do. Why are you fixing it here? We had a wall while attempting to fix it up in a navigation room, so now we're trying to fix something more fundamental down here. Quite complicated to explain, and it's a shot in the dark, honestly. Well, fingers crossed. And this is the only other power room we can enter. The one at the far end is not one we can access.
Recycler room, we can take a look at that. Oh, hey, did you say something? It's so loud in there. The recyclers are chewing through a lot of debris and broken stuff right now. No, I didn't say anything. What? Sorry, you have to speak up if you need anything. Hope you don't mind that I keep trying to stop this thing from overheating. No any news on the power rod? Nope. Power cord? Oh, that's, it says school, but that, that is definitely not the school. Yeah, going up and down during that section is just a little bit wonky. Okay, so we've been collecting some information. We could find Chi Chi in this area again. Grab her real quick. Okay, stay cool. Chi Chi. Chi Chi. Okay, that was probably creepy. Leona, is Kimi okay? I think he broke his leg during the outage, or at least sprained his ankle. That's why I was at the hospital to ask for painkillers. Thank you so much for siding with me. I understand it's a selfish wish, and there are people who might need the medicine more. But that's just not the way I could see it right now. You understand that, right? I get it. I feel the same way. Hope he feels better soon. Thank you. I'll take him to the hospital as soon as things have settled down a little bit. Are you those just painkillers? I mean, I, I think Kimi or whatever his name is would have been fine without painkillers. Whatever. Um, we wanted to ask you about Chi Chi. Not that I think you have information for us. Yeah, that's not an editing glitch. That is, um, that's the game spawning people in and then realizing that this is after the catastrophe and people aren't going to be walking around. We cut through the residential area through the magic of video editing. Actually, since we are here, let's real quick do another Chi Chi event in the psychiatry ward. Chi-Chi, what the hell is your problem? Get angry again. My bad. Chi-Chi, I'm really not sure what to do with you. What's the problem? Don't you want to go back? I guess that's a no. According to my notes, there's one more place for Chi-Chi. Right, can you tell me about... How about the broken PDA? That's my PDA. Or rather was, from the looks of it. Must have gotten smashed when I hit the wall. I'll get back to the power node as soon as possible and see if it still works. About those large rods in the middle of the power node rooms. They receive and distribute the power to the respective part of the ship. The two unmanned ones provide a log of all the node's recent activity. If the screen on a rod is black, doesn't it mean the node is inactive or broken? Not necessarily. They're frequently turned off and may break or get disconnected independently. Right now, the rods at all four nodes are certainly back up and running. How do you know? Because no parts of the ship are currently unpowered from what I've heard. It was pitch black in the room as soon as my node failed. A warning popped up on the screen and suddenly it went out entirely. Did you catch what it said? It reported a node failure, or maybe multiple. In other words, one or more nodes failed before yours. Correct. You know anything else about the order of events during the power outage? Afraid not, Chief. I found this little display saying that you work at Power Node B. That's right. Is there anything more specific you want to ask me about? We already asked about the specific one. <laughs> in, uh, in the wrong order. I'm trying to trace where the power outage originated. There are large rods with screens on them down in the power node rooms. Can you tell me anything about them that would help my case? Sounds like you already found the display on node A that logs all nodes activity. If you want to know what went down in node B, you have to ask Tion. All I know is the alarm started blaring, then the lights turned off, and I was flung into a wall. I woke up all wet with a searing pain in my eye. At first I thought I was bleeding like crazy, but most of it was actually water from a burst pipe. By that point, gravity was back, the emergency lights were on, and the doors worked again. To be honest, I didn't have another look at the screen before I left to seek medical attention. 
Did you notice any notifications prior to your node turning on? I must have missed them because the alarm doesn't start for nothing. I assume at least two nodes failed before mine. Okay, let's take a look at our notes. We have four nodes. A, B, C, and D. A and C are unmanned. And so we'll need to consult the logbook for those. Keon works in B, and it says here the power node he was working on was not the first one to go out. It's either second, third, or fourth. Doesn't really narrow things down too much, but that's something to work with. Arjun works in D, and the alarm started before his power node went out. Since two nodes go out, then the alarm starts, this means that he is either third or fourth. Taking a look at the evidence. Power rod B has no information. Has a small display listing the person charging the file. Also engineer, filed separately. Power node A log, malfunction detected, one power node off grid, two power nodes off grid, alarm started, three power nodes off grid, and then it shut down. So power node A is fourth. That means that Arjun has to be third, since it was either third or fourth for him. And that means Tihan has to be second, because it has to be second, third, or fourth for him. That tells us that power node C went off first. So we're gonna want to submit that. Where are you at, C? I see D. Oh, there it is, C, right there. I, I wish this organized better, because we see, like, B up here and such. Whatever, game. Chief, I saw you submitted your results. Good work. I forwarded them to Sergeant Paul. Let's hope it helps. Go to your bunk and try to get some rest. My bunk. Captain, there's nothing else you can do at the moment. It's important that you go back to full health as soon as possible. We'll evaluate your results now. I'll call you immediately if anything of importance happens in the meantime. Understood, Captain. Since there is a farm area that I don't have access to, I guess I can't find Chi Chi before this event. There's a cutscene that happens in our bunk. What the? Stella? What are you doing in my bunk, Ava? I'm sorry, I think this is a big misunderstanding. My place got completely wrecked when the thing happened. I was told that this bunk was empty and that I could stay here until everything was sorted out. So I was granted access. Oh. Yeah, I see. I was supposed to move into the chief's bunk weeks ago. I guess that's why they thought this one was free. Sorry for jumping you like this. I'm a little paranoid due to recent events. It's okay. Everything is fine. I'm sorry for the confusion. I'll tell Richard I need another bunk. No, wait. You can stay in my dad's bunk. It's right above mine. That's nice of you. Thanks. I'll request access. Of course. How are you holding up, Stella? About as well as you'd think. Everything's a crap show, and I feel responsible for fixing it. And you? I'm fine. Listen, you don't need to bear all that responsibility alone. I think there are better ways we could... I'm really sorry, but I'm getting a call. I think it's the captain. Oh, I'll get out of your hair. Sorry for the intrusion. I'll be upstairs if you want to talk, okay? Thank you, Ava. Captain? Chief, I'm afraid there is no time to rest after all. Please come see me at the conference room on the bridge as soon as you can. Did you find out what caused the outage? Let's talk in person. Captain Talia, I came as fast as I could. Thank you, Chief. Why? Why are we meeting here? I need to talk to you alone. The sergeants evaluated your assessment of the power outage. You are right. Power node C started the chain reaction. Knowing this, we were able to determine the reason. The ship's engine has been turned on. What? The ship was not equipped to perform a maneuver without any preparation. The engine hasn't been used in over 30 years. Perform a maneuver? We have changed course. The engines are still running. We are slowly accelerating and changing our trajectory. Why? Why aren't we changing it? Because the navigators are locked out of their own system. At first, they were completely unable to even boot it up. Now they can see what's happening, but they're unable to do anything. What kind of glitch? It's not a glitch. The system has been hacked. The program maneuver will end tomorrow. Once it's complete, we will be headed toward a different star. A different star? Why? What's there? Nothing. But it is a lot closer. We'll be entering its gravitational pull in just about three years. Can we course correct back to Euros tomorrow after the maneuver is finished? We don't know yet if the system will let us back in at that point. But even if it does, it will be too late. We will need almost all the fuel we still have to decelerate. If we allow the ongoing maneuver to finish, we won't have enough fuel to course correct and to break. We will be able to just do one. We either arrive at the wrong star or we overshoot the right one. Chief, I need you to understand what this means. The maneuver was only possible in a very small window of time. 
This is a premeditated sabotage of the mission that may have been planned for years. Whoever did this not only has intimate knowledge of our systems, they were also able to calculate and perform a complex maneuver. You think they knew what would cause this disastrous power outage? Maybe not. That part did not need to happen for their plan to succeed. This seems more like an accidental byproduct. There's a complex series of steps we usually have to take to prepare an engine start. The hacker either didn't know about that, or they weren't able to pull it off for a lack of time, skill, accomplices. Whatever the reason, we believe they were hoping the maneuver would stay undetected for as long as possible. The engine is set to a very gentle burn. The change in gravity is almost unnoticeable. But there are signs of our sideways sub momentum that people will notice eventually. Slanted water in the tank, a ball rolling down the hill, people tripping over their own feet. Ugh, I thought my balance was off because of head trauma. Listen, Chief, this will be the most important assignment of your career. Our navigators are trying everything to regain control of the engine, but they would not give me any assurances. The hacker is the only person who knows how to undo this. You need to find them and make them talk before it's too late. If we do not course correct by the same time tomorrow, our mission fails. If we have any leads whatsoever, the hack might have been perpetrated by the distance we were already investigating. The timing cannot be coincidental. Talk to your sergeants at the security office to follow up on this. We do have another lead. The perpetrator must have been at the navigation room to go through with the attack. In fact, they must have been there in the minutes right before the power went out. There are no signs of forced injury, so our prime suspects are the people who have access to the room. This includes navigators Noelia, Orlin, and Joseph. At least some of them should be there right now. Engineers Eric and Asher also have access, but I don't know their status or whereabouts since the incident. I've granted you access to the navigation room. Have a look around in there and talk to the navigators. I know that I'm briefing you right now and are instructed to help, but don't forget that we can't rule them out as suspects. Well, outside of them and your sergeants, you are to keep the contents of this entire meeting to yourself. Understood? Do you think the people should know? Besides, we might need their help. Chief, we cannot trust anybody right now. If we tell the population what we know and what our plans are, we inevitably tell the enemy. That would be all. Let me know immediately when you make any progress. I will. As I exited the conference room, a thousand questions started forming in my head. If the hacker's sole intention had been to divert the ship, why did they specifically set course to the Otis system? Were they planning to orbit the star for the rest of time? I immediately felt that Talia wasn't telling me the whole truth, but I knew that prying would have been pointless. She had a habit of tightly controlling the flow of information, and in most instances, it was probably wise and well-intentioned. I would get my answer soon enough, anyway. What's that? A pack of painkillers lying under the table. I prescribed the teacher Simon. How did they get there? Alright, so we have painkillers as our new case that we got as a result of finding them. Otherwise, we wouldn't have gotten this, but the game, I think, forces you to get this quest. So you'd eventually have to do it. When I went to search the navigation room, I found a box of painkillers under one of the tables. They seem to have been prescribed to teacher Simon. Let's ask about these painkillers. I found this box of painkillers under a table over there. Do you know whose it is? Let me see it. It's not mine. And I don't remember anyone else taking painkillers around here. Has Simon ever been in here? The teacher? No, of course not. I see. Thank you. Never get it, Joseph. How are things going? Gee, I am so sorry about this whole mess. We're still locked out of our system. Somebody must have done this on purpose. We'll continue trying to regain control, but it's proving to be very complicated. Good luck. Please contact the sergeants immediately if you make any progress. I will, Chief. Do you have any idea what went down in here leading up to the incident? I'm sorry, Chief. I hadn't been here for hours prior to the attack. I was out celebrating arrival day. Can anyone corroborate that? Engineer Farron and I were talking to Dr. Yaha when the power outage happened, and in the hour leading up to it. So you weren't in here at all that day? As far as I know, nobody was supposed to be in here that day. Thank you, Navigator Joseph. So now we have his alibi. We can also talk about the other people. There were engineers Asher and Eric have permission to be here. And then there's navigators Noella, Orlin, and Joshua. You know where I can find Engineer Asher? He was working at the navigation room earlier, but he got really tired. So he needed to go rest at his bunk for a little bit. He's not going to say about Orlin. You know where I can find Engineer Eric or navigator Noella? They helped us out in the navigation room for a while earlier. And so we ran into a problem with access rights that can only fixed down in the server room. So now they're in the server room in the inner hall A. I think so, yes. There's Ferret. It's not to say about that. We already talked about Eric. We can't con uh, confirm his alibi with Orlin. We can ask about Orlin. He has his own unique dialogue regarding it. 
Why do you have this? Looks like a mugshot. Navigator Orlin, have you had any success regaining control over your system? Not yet. Can I ask you some questions about the events that transpired here around the time of the power outage? Afraid not, Chief. What? Why not? I believe we haven't formally met ever since you inherited your father's job. Didn't answer his questions. Won't answer yours. And why is that? I have my reasons. It's a long story. Do you know what the stakes are right now? I can't help but feel that, like you might be involved in this mess. If you want to clear your name, you better start answering my questions now. Tell you what, Chief. Maybe you got off on the wrong foot here. You're not your old man, so maybe this is my chance that someone will finally look into this for me. What are you talking about? I was framed for a crime 20 years ago. I originally joined the mission as a farmer. After the verdict, I was barred from working another day in my job. I was forced to swap places with the navigator. I wasn't allowed to see my biological child anymore. They all failed me. The crew, security, William. That's why I won't help you. So you want me to reopen the case, clear my name. Even if I wanted to, you haven't given me a lot to go by. I don't even know what you were charged with. Ask Sergeant Alderich. He had a front row seat when it all went down. Fine. I'll give him a call and see what we can do. Yes, Chief? Sergeant, I'm in the navigation room looking into the power outage. I just had a chat with Navigator Orlin. He's not answering my questions. He said he'll talk to me if we reopen the case from- Is he serious? I'm afraid so. Now? He wants us to reopen his case now. It sounded like he's been wanting this for a long time, but he sees an opportunity now. Chief, this will take a while to look into. Maybe I'll find something. Just send me the old file. If you wish, but in my professional opinion, we shouldn't spend too much time on this. I'll send you a message and attach the case records. So you know what this is about? There's only one case he could be talking about. Well, two, but they're connected. You'll see. One more thing. If you're really going to look into this, you need access to the farm. I'm granting it to you now. It's above the hospital in the bio area. You can reach it via the elevator. Thank you, Sergeant. So, before we continue with that, let's ask him about his comrades. He has nothing to say about Joseph. He has nothing to say about Noella. Or Barrett. Or Asher. As far as navigators here are concerned, you only have to ask one of them, and then they'll give you the same dialogue we already experienced. But asking for the second perspective doesn't contribute anything. I'm sure you recognize this substance. I do. I used to work with it every day, that part's true. But I sure as hell didn't use the break into anyone's bunk. I had Sergeant Otter send me the case file. Much appreciated, Chief. Alright, we'll worry more specifically about that in a bit here. We still want to work on the painkillers. I found this box of painkillers under a table in here. I don't know if you overheard the conversation earlier. I did. I agree with my colleague on everything. None of us have been taking painkillers in here, and Teacher Simon has never been in this room. Alright, I don't know what's better for the editing if I leave left and then enter the room from the right, which has a slightly longer walk cycle, or do it from this room <laughs> over here. But I went ahead and just banked on the same direction. Okay, let's ask this guy about painkillers. I found something strange up in the navigation room. Have either of you seen this box of painkillers before? Can't say that I have, Chief. Me neither, sorry. Is it important? It's suspicious because it was prescribed to Teacher Simon. He shouldn't have access to that room. He doesn't. Never saw him there. Have you, Eric? No, of course not. Huh. Okay. Let's try asking about his comrades. Can't his, let's say, about Asher or Farad. I think it was just Asher, actually. Farad is not one of the engineers that has access to it. It's just an engineer that we are currently working with. Okay, and unfortunately we cannot ask these guys about the navigation room, which I think is very, very odd. Let's try asking about each other. She has nothing about Eric, and he has nothing to say about Noella. That's correct. Okay. Do we have anything else we want to talk about? We could try talking about the alibi, but they wouldn't have anything to, to verify on that. So let's head, head on out. Asher's bunk is all the way over here. This is the question mark that we had seen on the map a long time ago. Oh, gee, what are you doing here? The case leads me here. I may have a few questions for you if you don't mind. I'm very tired, Chief. I was just about to go to bed. Had a pretty exhausting shift, I imagine. Very much so, but that's not it. I'm sick, Chief. I've been having to take it slow for a while now. I'm sorry to hear that. Can I ask what the diagnosis is? There isn't really a name for it because it was never a thing back on Earth. Docs have dubbed it interstellar dystrophy. Some people are hypersensitive to the living conditions out here. Seems to be genetic. You know, cosmic radiation, electromagnetic fields, recycled air, artificial gravity. 
It all works together to make you weak and tired and wretched kill you one way or another. The only way to find out if it affects you is to try living in space. It was unlucky. Eric's kid seems to have the same problem. Such a shame to be so sick at that age. I heard about it. Never knew the two of you had the same affliction. Do you mind if I ask you something? Go ahead. You're one of the two engineers who have access to the navigation room, correct? Correct. Were you there around the time of the power outage? No, I was resting right here in my bunk. Like I said, I've been taking it slow. Was anybody here with you? No, I was alone all day. Have you been to the navigation room since the incident? Yes, I headed there a while after the lights came back on. I hoped of getting back into the system for as long as I could, but I got too tired after a while. Thank you. Get some rest. I hope you feel better soon. Thank you, Chief. You work in a navigation room quite frequently, right? I do. I found this box of painkillers under a table there. Have you seen it before? No, no, I haven't. It says it belongs to Teacher Simon. Is it possible he lost the box in there? I doubt it. Teachers can't just waltz in there, and they never have, as far as I know. That's what I suspected. Thank you. Okay, can you tell me about any of your comrades? Nothing to say about Joseph. Let's say about Orland. Let's say about Noella or Eric. Okay, well, that's uh, kind of a bust there. We've currently spoken to everybody out of the five about these painkillers. Let's try talking about Simon. Also, later on in this quest, there's a bunk near here that we should go into. Well, for, a, for another case that we can work on in parallel with this. But to keep the videos simple, we're working on one case at a time. Run all the way across on the third floor and we can find these two teachers. Teacher Mariella, Teacher Simon, how are you holding up? Chief, we're all still in shock, but physically okay. We just finished going around the bunks to check on all the kids. Seems like they're all accounted for, thankfully. Most of them are actually in better spirits than I thought. I guess they haven't depleted all their optimism yet. That's dark, Chief. Sorry. Teacher Simon, I need to ask you something. What is it, Chief? Do you ever take painkillers? Painkillers? No, not in years. So you don't know why your name is on this package? What? No, that must be a mistake. I haven't been to the hospital in forever. I assume that's where these come from. Have you ever been to the navigation room? The, no, never. Alright, thank you. In this section, similar to how we dealt with navigators Oelia and Engineer Eric, or the navigators in the bridge, speaking to each of these doctors will pretty much give us the same dialogue. In this case, the only one word is different, mother or doctor. I know you're having a very busy day, but I need to ask you a question. What is it, Chief? This box of painkillers says it was prescribed to Teacher Simon. However, I found them in the navigation room, which he hasn't cleared to access. Maybe you have an idea how they ended up there. Chief, is that really important right now? Tell him to bring the painkillers here if he doesn't need them. We're quickly running out right now. It is important. They might be evidence of a crime. We have a lot going on here. I really don't remember if I prescribed painkillers to Teacher Simon. If someone did, it must have been you or your daughter, correct? Correct. Aren't there any records? We keep records over in the consultation room. But there's a lot to sift through if you don't know what you're looking for. I'll take a look. Thank you. Dr. Yaha is the head doctor, so you would think that she'd be able to give us more information. I have my own reasons for asking her. Medical records could be useful to figure out how the painkillers ended up in the navigation room. It's all gibberish to me. I should call Paul. That's the type of thing he can usually help me with. Hey, Stell. How are you doing? Well, pretty stressed is putting it mildly. And you? Oh, you know. Same. What can I do for you? I'm looking into the origin of this box of painkillers I found. I found medical records that seem to follow some sort of pattern. Here, I'll show you. Do you happen to know how it works? Wow, that's a lot of pages. I can't really read it, but I can offer you something else. I'll transfer it to your computer here at the security office so we can search for specific entries. So if you have concrete suspicion which code you're looking for, we can confirm whether or not it exists. Thank you, I'll take you up on that. First, I have to figure out what code I'm looking for. I'm sure you'll figure it out, still. Thank you, Paul. See you soon at the office. And we also received the very handy medical records evidence. We can ask a lot of people about it. Let's actually take a look at the evidence itself. It says here, a long list of what seems to be recent prescription. The last of many pages states. This is the most recent prescriptions that have been issued out by the spaceship. And then we have numbers that looks like it starts with a 1 or a 2. And then L or R, followed by 0 through 3, A through C, and then just a, a pair of possibly random numbers. I will tell you that each one of these means something and you can actually track it down. So the game, while you do have a console and it expects you to put in a very specific code, even if you put in any of these codes right here that are obviously a real invalid code, the game gives you nothing and tells you it's an error. But they actually mean something. And I was able to deduce this in a backwards way because I solved another case 
And I noticed that in that case, I was dealing with a combination of characters that are very much closely match what we're looking here. And that's how I easily broke this case. Let's try talking to me about people in medical records. Hey, Elliot, can I ask you something? I promise it won't take long. Okay. Have you been given any medicine recently? Yes, I always take all my medicine. I swear I take it every day like Dr. Yaha says. Don't worry, I believe you. Do you know what the medicine is called? I don't know, but they made it just for my interstellar dystrophy. And Dr. Yaha is the one giving it to you. Alright then. That's it already. Thank you very much. Chief. Yes, Chief. So I copied these medical records from the consultation room because they relate to a case I'm working on. But I'm having a hard time deciphering them. Could you help me out? Let me see. Right, the system scrambles them like this. When we input data or query something specific, it's in a human legible format. So you can't read it either. Can you at least tell me what's stored in each of these entries? That should be the prescribing doctor, the patient, and the medication. I see, thank you. Let's take a look at a little bit on this. We take a peek at Elliot. His residential area is L2C. Alright. We have the biggest chunk of the code right now. Do we have an L2C? We do. 1L2C28. 28. 28 would then be prescribing medicine. That's our that's our conjecture here, right? Are you with me? One might be Dr. Yaha. And then L2C is the kid. So this is not how medical records are are, gen are typically written. I, I will say that this is not it. First off, we also have families living in the same bunk. If, if, if we say take a look at his dad, it's also L2C. So yes, the, the kid is living in L2C and so is the father. Just to make sure that we have things matched though, we have Yaha, Elliot, and Interstellar Dystrophy. We know another person with Interstellar Dystrophy. Let's take a look. Will he match for R3C? Is Asher, that's the old dude? Yes, R3C. In this case, we can see that this is Destina, Asher, Muscular Dystrophy. Then we need to figure out why 13, 42, 55, those are the only ones left. This must be the resident and this must be the prescribing doctor. Okay, let's take a look at Simon. Simon's somewhere in here. It's Nevrin. There he is. L3A. All right, did we see anything with L3A? We do not, but we may have to deduce it. Let's talk to some of these other people, such as L3C. That was Noelia, Asher, Zena, Tihan, Elliot, which we just covered, Aaron, and Isaac. Let's go and interview those individuals and see what they have to say. This Noelia is first on our list. Let's ask her. Assistant Navigator Noelia, I need to ask you something personal if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Have you been prescribed any medicine recently? Yeah, I get my prescriptions of antihistamines renewed. Thank you. By whom? Dr. Destina. Why? Just going through some records for a case. Okay. Engineer Eric, I need to ask you something for a case I'm working on. Okay. Have you prescribed any medicine lately? Not in a while. Only sustained a few scratches during the incident. Be worth seeing the docs for. My son should be at the hospital right now, though. He goes there once a week to get a checkup and new medicine. The docs have dubbed his condition interstellar dystrophy. He's just not suited to the living conditions in space. So I've heard. I'm sorry, I hope he feels better soon. He won't, Chief. He won't. Next up is Xena. She's in the psychiatric ward. That's where we ended up dumping her. I'm sure that's going to be a controversial decision for some people. But we can see how quickly things can go to crap on a spaceship. Let's go ahead and take care of business. She has nothing to actually say to us. What we need to do is ask her to visit somebody. For, so if we ended up picking, let's say, medical records. I don't know what you mean, but let me know if there's a patient you want to talk to. That's your clue. We need to see Xena. Personnel, I'm looking for Engineer Zena. Is she here? She is, but her condition isn't great. Physical or mental? I meant physical, but her mental state isn't great either. It's impossible for me to talk to her. Go ahead, see if she's awake. I'm unlocking the doors to the hallway into her room. Please don't upset her or take too long. Zena, are you awake? Stella, what a nice surprise. How are we holding up? I've been better. I have a headache. Were you hurt during the accident? Accident? We'll also need to talk to Xena for another case, but again, we're one at a time. So I apologize for that, but I think this is the best way to do the videos. Xena, there's something I need to ask you. Do you remember which medicine you were prescribed here and by whom? Medicine? 
Oh, yes. Yaha gives me pills to take every day. Psychotropic drugs, by any chance? They are? You know, it's possible. Okay, thank you. While we're here, we can also interview one other person. Um, let's see here. Where is he at? He was just recently added during the events or cutscenes taking place. Nurse Nara, is Assistant Captain Curtis here? Um, yeah. Is it possible for me to talk to him? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. What does that mean? The captain seems very concerned about his condition and what he might say to people. And she disallowed all visits to him. She implied it, but she also knows that decisions like this are at the discretion of the medical staff. So what does the medical staff say? Open doors for you. Thank you. We take a look at why he might be in here. See, he was put in the psych wards weeks ago, apparently on Talia's recommendation. It seems like barely anyone has seen him since. And we'll be able to confirm about the psychotropic medications from him as well. I have a somewhat private question if you don't mind. What is it? Have you prescribed any medicine recently? Take a wild guess. Psychotropic drugs? Excellent investigating, Chief. Very funny. We prescribed them to you. Lucky Aha, she's in charge of this floor. I see. And I don't think there's any reason to be on this side either, over here. But there's a whole wing. We're going to return to the engineering to cross off the next name on our list. For me, it's a lot of back and forth, but for you, I think this makes it the clearest way to do the video. We have Tihan. Engineer Tihan, how are you holding up? I feel okay, Chief, thank you. They patched me up at the hospital faster than I thought. That's good to hear. Do you have any new findings about the power outage? Not for now. It's difficult to get the full picture with Arjun at the hospital and two power nodes inaccessible. The captain messaged me directly earlier. I'll report to her as soon as I figure out anything relevant. Engineer Tian, am I right in assuming that you have been prescribed pain medication? I mean, you saw the way I looked at the hospital just a few hours ago. I did. You've made a more remarkable recovery. Your doctor was in charge of you there. Destina, why? Just looking into some medical records for a case. Good luck with that. Thanks. Program Aaron, I have a bit of an unusual question for you. You, Chief. Have you been prescribed any medicine recently? That's a little private, don't you think? It would help me understand something for our case. Alright then, as you know, I was hit over the head around a month ago. I've been having occasional headaches ever since, and Destina finally prescribed me some painkillers last week. I went to ask her multiple times over the last couple of weeks. Thanks for telling me. By speaking to Tihan or Aaron who tell us about their painkiller prescription, that gives us the ID number for what pills we need. That's all the information we actually need, though it still would have been far easier to just mash all the numbers into the laptop once we had the first four digits, the Doctor 1 and 2, and then the patient bunk code. The four or five different medications that the game offers you, number 18, number 42, whatever, 55, those are just put on those numbers, it would have been way easier than running around the map. But we might as well get the last one for completeness to sake. Commissioner Isaac, I'm looking into medical records for our case and need to ask you something if you don't mind. Snooping around in people's private lives again, are we? It's sometimes part of my job, you know. Relax, Chief, I know. What's your question? Have you been prescribed any medicine lately? Yeah, I have. Been struggling with all that dust on my job, so the doc gave me some antihistamines. Which doc? Destina. Thanks, that's all I wanted to ask. Here's Asher. I forgot to cross him off the list because we did speak to him about medicine earlier and I mistook that for talking to him about the records. Engineer Asher, I have a somewhat personal question if you don't mind. I don't mind, but do make it quick, please. I'm really tired. Have you been taking prescription medicine lately? Of course, docs whipped up a unique compound they use to treat interstellar dystrophy. Who prescribed it to you? Last time it was Destina. Sergeant Paul, you said I could search the medical records on my computer? Yeah, I already copied them over when you sent them earlier. Like I said, you can only enter the specific string you're looking for. The system will tell you whether or not that string exists in the records. The interface is open on your screen already. You can use it any amount of times. Good work, thanks. Sergeant, Captain Talia said you would clue me in about our next steps. Yes, Chief. You suspected that paper was being stolen from the activities room at the museum. So we had Engineer Isaac surveil their recycler specifically. This morning, he informed us that an unusually large amount of paper was recycled at the museum's break room. We suspect that whoever kept stealing paper over the last few weeks got cold feet and dumped it all. Interesting. We have the exact time of this happening. Precisely 11.13 this morning. It should be noted that the break room is only accessible to museum staff. It connects to the museum hall and the activities room. 
To prevent the public from barging through, the room has keycard scanners installed on both sides. You have clearance, so the doors will open for you without a card, and there won't be new entries in the lock when you pass through. There are no signs of a break-in, and the museum is closed anyway as they're assessing the damage. The entrance to the activities room already broke during the power outage, and we're positive that nobody used it since. So they're saying that the person who recycled the paper this morning must be Devran, Baptiste, or, or Oceane. They're all at the museum now. We tell them that you'll come over to ask some questions, just to get an overview of the situation at the museum. Not sure if they bought it. Doesn't historian Michio technically have access to? He should, but you know him. He hasn't shown up for work in a long time, so his access was actually revoked a while ago. Good work. I'll go and have a look around. I can speak to the sergeants, but that will softlock my game. Hey, Stell? Yes? I know you put a lot of pressure on yourself, usually more than you should. This is a high-pressure situation. You know what I'm talking about. You're trying to live up to expectations that maybe nobody else has of you. Talia is always very clear about her high expectations. Talia has impossible expectations of everyone. It's not healthy. I'm just trying to say, William would be proud of you no matter what. Thank you. This is the section that I was talking about that is completely ridiculous. I have to put in all of this in, and I don't really mind typing it, but going in a, as a dial format for literally transcribing the characters on a keyboard. Really? That's working backwards to get back to where we started. <laughs> because for them to code this in, they use the keyboard. Fine, whatever. We don't we won't know one or two, so we'll just plug in one and see what happens. We know that our target is L3A. And then we need painkillers, which is gonna be 55. It's a match! Oh! I found the entry I've been looking for! Looks like the painkillers were actually prescribed to teacher Simon by Dr. Yaha. I'll have to confront her about it. That's the very doctor we brought the medical rec or painkillers to earlier in the, in the very beginning of all this. Good job, Stell. Talking about medical workers will get us nothing we need to talk about, specifically these painkillers. Dr. Yaha, I need to talk to you. Chief, right now is really not the best. The system says that you prescribe painkillers to teacher Simon, but everything else points to that not being true. Help me make sense of this. Chief, I'm all ears. People aren't getting what they need, alright? The restrictions on some medications are ridiculous, and I've gotten tired of bringing this up with the ethics committee. I have patients in chronic pain who burn through their weekly allotment in just two days. So I made prescriptions out to other people who I didn't actually need any. That way they wouldn't get flagged in the system. So Teacher Simon never even knew about this prescription. No, he has nothing to do with it. So how did this box end up in the navigation room? Dr. Yaha, this is crucial information. I can't disclose the full context, but please tell me what you know. I've been working with Engineer Asher. He comes here very often to pick up men, so an extra box here or there doesn't arouse suspicion. Long story short, we got to talking and realized we saw certain things the same way. So he started helping me distribute extra painkillers to people who really needed them. The secret stash is in the navigation room where he works. That makes sense. Maybe the box I found fell out when the ring stopped. Look, thank you for coming clean about this whole operation. Let's go to the ethics committee meeting and bring this up again. The rules clearly need to change so you're no longer forced to work around them. Really? That'd be amazing, Chief. Thank you. Okay, let's go see Asher. Okay, this next section I don't wholly agree with. You have to take everything everybody tells you as 100% true and completely factual. There's, there's no room for argument there. It, it's so strange. Even though a large part of an investigation is questioning people and figuring out what is true and what is, I guess, uh, misguided. I don't know what to really say about that other than I wish this spaceship had security cameras because that would solve 100% of the game right there. Okay. We can't talk to him about any of this stuff. What we can do is immediately submit this case. I can't ask him about medical records or painkillers. That doesn't do anything. So we'll go ahead and submit. It is Engineer Asher, but I can just figure out where he is in this thing. It's Eric. I thought maybe the engineers might be together, but he's just down, he's down there. Case submitted. Case updated general. I should go talk to Asher again now that I figured out his secret. Only until this point can I talk to him. So you see that the E key is highlighted? It wouldn't have been highlighted earlier. Well, the jig is up. Yeah, I just sent me a message. I guess I'm in trouble now, huh? Let's see. I was hoping we could talk about something else first. Now that you presumably having nothing to hide from me, 
Tell me everything you know about the time around the hack, especially what went down in the navigation room. Alright then, Chief, here's the full truth. I went back to the navigation room for the pills. I hurried to be the first person there because I already suspected that my stash had been blown open, and I was right. Nobody seemed to be in the room when I arrived. I grabbed all the medicine, or so I thought. When I bent over to pick up another package, I spotted a badge on the floor. I didn't think much of it, and I left immediately after grabbing the pills. Of course, I had no idea that there could have been foul play involved, or that it happened right in the navigation room. But in hindsight, it's pretty likely that someone lost it when they were tossed around in the power outage. In other words, you think that the person who lost the badge perpetrated the hack. What did the badge look like? Did you take it? No, but I have a record of it here on my PDA, see? I've seen it many times on my colleagues' colors. Remember the instrument malfunction two years ago when we flew blind for multiple days? A few of my colleagues got together and figured out the solution, had some sleepless nights. They were awarded this specifically manufactured badge for handling the crisis. I couldn't take part in the overnight sessions due to my health, so I didn't get the badge myself. Who did take part in them? Orland, Joseph, Noelle, and Eric. We have five total names here, and these are the remaining four names. Conveniently, it crosses him off the list. <laughs> Even though, it, it, additionally, it does mention in our case notes that it's convenient as well. But the only way to really solve the game is to believe everything everybody says. Have they been wearing the badge on their uniforms as well? Every day. So whoever used to wear it and doesn't have it anymore must be the person who lost it, right? Afraid it's not that easy, Chief. Next time I came back to the navigation room, everybody was already there, and the badge was no longer on the floor. So whoever lost it must have quickly picked it back up in the meantime. Did you ask around if anybody noticed the badge or saw who picked it up? No, and frankly, I think it's highly unlikely anyone did. We only had emergency lighting in the navigation room for a few hours after the outage. It was so dark we bumped into each other all the time. The only reason I saw the badge myself is because I got so close to the floor looking for the pills. That makes sense. Thank you for the report. You realize that we had to talk about your side hustle when all of this is over. I understand, Chief. Now we have the honorary badge. Uh, let's try asking about it. Chief, I don't really know what to say. I'm very tired. We, since we have concluded the pain medicine case, we have two cases left to go through, and I figured it makes more sense to pick the one that is more time sensitive. The game actually, as far as I know, doesn't care which one of these we complete first. I don't think there's a real time sensitive nature. It just logically makes more sense not to worry about the crime from 20 years ago more than the crime happening right now. At 11.13 this morning, a large amount of paper was recycled in the break room that connects the Earth Museum and the activity room. Only the three museum employees who are currently working have access to the recycler that was currently used. Whoever recycled the paper is very likely to be the paper thief that works with these suspected insurgents. I should go to the museum and talk to everybody there to recreate a timeline of events. Hit the wrong button. I keep hitting F as a habit. Probably because I do that more often than actually speaking to them, bringing evidence to people rather than initiating dialogue. Historian Baptist. Chief. How are you holding up? Terrible. I'm sifting through the wreckage of irreparable earth artifacts here. I'm sorry, but I need to ask you a few questions. Ask away, Chief. What did you do today? I arrived at 1045 like I do every day. I went for a quick coffee in the break room and returned here to continue salvaging the exhibits. You remember when you went to the break room? No, I'm afraid not. I was back here by the time Devrin arrived. We all have to use the entrance over there because the door activities room entrance is broken. Thank you. Ask away, Chief. What have Oceane and Devrin been up to today? I didn't pay close attention. They arrived a little later than me and left for the break room at some point. I suppose that they spent most of their day in the activities room since I didn't see them here. Did you see someone put something into the recycler in the break room? No. Thank you. This area here combines with the activities room to the side, the Earth Museum on the left, Activities room on the right. However, the door to the activities room was damaged in the power outage. Break room scanner activities room. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Let's continue talking to people. Stella, hi. Hey, Oceane. How are you doing? Had better days for sure, but I guess I shouldn't complain. Still a much better shape than this whole place. Than you? I think many of us are waiting for a statement of the crew. We still don't know what exactly has happened. We're still trying to figure that out. I hope we will have some answers soon. I see. So what are you doing here? I'd like to ask you a few questions. Um, sure. What did you do today? Well, I arrived here sometime before 11 and joined Dad in the break room for a coffee. Then I came to the activities room to help take inventory. Did you leave this room again at any point? No, I stayed here the whole time. Through which door did you enter the building today? The entrance to the activities room is busted, so we all came in through the museum hall. I'd like to ask you a few questions. 
But what have Devran and Baptiste been up to today? I've just spent most of his time in the museum, I think. Dad was in the break room with me and then joined me here. Did you see someone put something in the recycler? No. That's all. Here, take good, Devran. Chief, good to see you. How are you holding up? The incident was a disaster for the museum, to be honest. Many exhibits have been destroyed. You can't exactly manufacture replacements for artifacts from Earth. Can I ask you a few questions? Anytime, Chief. What did you do today? I arrived sometime before 11 and had coffee in the break room shortly after. Oshia joined me in the break room a few minutes later. Then I went to the activities room. We're still assessing the damage in here. The only thing we can really hope to repair in here is the door over there. Engineer Antonio is already working on it from the other side. Good day, Chief. Come around outside if you want to have a chat. Engineer Antonio? So it's safe to assume that nobody used the door today. Yes, we all came in through the museum. When did Tonio come here? I don't remember the exact time, to be honest. But he actually wasn't in here at all and got straight to work on the door from the other side. What have Oceana and Baptiste been up to today? Baptiste was already here when I arrived. Oceana joined me in the break room when I was having a coffee. She went to the activities room before me and I followed her soon after. Did you leave the activities room again? No, I stayed here the whole time. And Oceana? I was talking to Tonio, so I didn't pay attention. Did you see someone put something into the recycler? No. That's all, thank you. Let's try asking about the break room scanner activity. I noticed these scanners by the doors leading into the museum break room. Would you mind explaining to me how they work? They make sure the doors only open for museum workers. I'm afraid I can't explain any technical details to you. Do you set a card on them or... No, we just have to carry it with us. The scanner is proximity based. And its records are reliable? Records. I didn't know the doors are tracking us, to be honest. She has nothing to say about that. The layout is Earth Museum, Recycler, the Door Scanner, the Activities Room, and then the Blocked Door. He also has nothing to say about the Scanner. Let's talk to Tony to confirm any alibis. Hey, Chief. Engineer Antonio, glad to see you in good health. The engineers are largely okay, probably because most of us were wearing helmets during the incident. That's good to hear. We really need you to keep this ship together right now. Indeed you do. Listen, do you remember when exactly Devon joined you here? Actually, he was already standing right there when I arrived. When did you arrive here to fix the door? I can tell you precisely. Let me check my records. I came here at 11.15. That's all. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Also, can we talk about Ava? Probably not. She needed her bunk fixed. Okay. That's everything we need. Let's take a look at our notes. So the break room scanner activities room says the door opened at 11.04, 11.08, 11.11, and 11.18. When a museum worker passes through the door in either direction, the scanner will pick it up, and that's all of today's records. It doesn't count when I open the door, meaning that's convenient for the player, so I don't have to worry about any extra times happening. Additionally, the game you know, would have to keep track of what time it is in-game, which it doesn't really want to do that. So that way, things happen at the pace of the player, no matter how slow you are or fast you are. Okay. Well, Baptiste arrived at 10.45. So he, he then, according to his alibi, took a coffee break and returned. So we'll say that he never went through the, bro uh, the scanner door. Remember that the break room is between Earth Room and the scanner. So if you, the only reason why the scanner would ever go off is if you're entering that place with a fire. And then we had to take a look at what Devrin has to say. He arrived sometime before 11. We already cl clarified that. And then, then he had coffee in a break room. Break room again, not part of the scanner, would not have gone off. Oh, she had joined him in the break room a few minutes later. Then he went to the activities room. But who went there first? Let's see if I can do this correctly. And navigating between these two windows is very weird with the keyboard. Okay. Arr! Oceane went to the activities room and then she says, Dad was in the break room and then joined me here. It sounds like she went into the activities room first, followed by her dad. And her dad would have at least been there by 11.15 to be seen by Donio. Going into the activities room to pick up the paper, and then back 
to the recycler in the break room. That would trigger the door twice. We have four timestamps that people have entered in. 11.04, 11.08, 11.11, 11.18. .11. We know for sure that Devrin had to have been there at least at 11.11. .11. Could have been the other two times prior. But the door opened again at 11.18, and Oceane says she never left the room. That's very suspicious. We can also make some conjecture about who was entering at 11.04 and 11.08, but it doesn't really matter. Let's go and pull the trigger on this one. Who put the paper into the recycler? It's going to be Oceane. Chief, I received your submission. Reviewing it now. Your conclusion makes sense to me. You should confront Oceane now. The situation is very volatile, and we shouldn't waste any time bringing her to the brig. Copy that. Assistant Caretaker Oceane, I need to ask you to come with me. What? Why? We have some questions that we'd rather ask in private. Are you arresting me? If you won't come with me voluntarily, yes. Sounds like you need to brush up on the word voluntary. What's going on here? I need to take Oceane in for questioning. Is this about the- Shush, Dad. Listen, Chief, I stole the paper, I swear. Did you now? For what purpose? I'm not telling you. It wasn't him. I took the paper for the recruitment letters. My stash was blown open in the accident. My dad saw it. I didn't tell him what the paper was for and he didn't press me on it. But he urged me to return it all, so that's what I did this morning. Recruitment? Let's go, Oceane. Follow me to the brig. We got a message from Bodo. Let's take that look at that. We brought the girl to the brig. I'll have a chat with her shortly. Expect results soon. Well, we cannot enter the brig anymore at this point, by the way. Probably because the game doesn't want to render Ocean and have dialogue there. I don't know. But it does narrow things down for the player. Maybe that's also the reason that you don't have to worry about returning to the brig. Chief Stella, I beg of you, please go easy on my daughter. I'm sure this is just a big misunderstanding. She returned all the paper like I told her to. Should we all be working together in a time like this? Okay. We now have one final case to, that is lined up the setup. While we still haven't finished... The navigation room, that's currently in the general section because we don't have a specific case right yet. Since the game hasn't really given you all the pieces that it wants you to make your conclusion. So let's talk about the setup. Navigator Orland claims that someone framed him for a crime many years ago. It won't help me with my investigation unless I find out who really did it. it Maybe it was him after all. Sergeant Alderich was present at the trial and still has my father's file on the case. He sent me a message with multiple attachments to get started. I've been granted access to the farm floor in the bio area. It's the only place where the suspicious substance mentioned in the case records could have come from. Sounds like a good place to start. So at the top of the hospital is the farm, and we'll finally find Chi Chi. Okay, Chi Chi, tell you what. You go back to the bunk whenever you're ready. I promise I'll let you roam free once in a while, okay? Chi Chi, please. I don't want to be alone. She looked more relaxed this time. I should check my bunk sometime. Maybe she actually went home. Throw it away. If you love them, set them free. Before we start interviewing these farmers, let's take a look at our evidence for this case. First off, there's fed fertilizer. Only accessible to very few people working on the farm floor. Sergeant Alderick sent me this record. The fertilizer was allegedly used in a makeshift explosive by Navigator Orlin, who worked as a farmer at the time. This file says Farmer Orlin was found guilty of using an explosive to gain access to his ex partner Zena's bunk in the residential area during a custody battle over their biological child, Lewis. The most damning piece of evidence was a fertilizer used in a makeshift or explosive only accessible to Farmer Orlin and his colleague, who had an alibi. My dad was the chief at the time, and Sergeant Alderick was his right-hand man. Orland was found guilty and transferred to a navigation room, where he no longer had access to dangerous chemicals. He was also put under a temporary restraining order against Xena and Lewis. Okay. Also, I remember Lewis specifically saying that Xena left her husband back on Earth, so I guess that <laughs> her husband is not uh, his dad, uh, Lewis's dad, Orland. Whatever. All right, family matters aside, that has nothing to do with us. We just need to solve this case. Farmer Umberto, how are things going up here? Could be better, could be worse, Chief. Nav and I weren't hurt at all, we got lucky. One of our tanks was toppled over. It's too heavy to lift for the two of us, but the backup is on the way. Players are taking it surprisingly well so far. We don't anticipate a disruption in supply chain. Look well to mop the water and soil, though. I hope we don't clog the recycler. Now the chaos in this place is almost back to its original state. <laughs> that sounds good. I was a little worried about the food supplies. Farmer Roberto, are you familiar with this substance? Of course I am. Use it almost daily. Does anyone ever leave the farm floor? We're not allowed to take it away from here, Chief. 
Are there any measures in place to ensure this? It's just a rule, but I promise we never break it. Not even once, maybe years ago. Not since I transferred here from my navigation room, to my knowledge at least. Robert Umberto, I'm looking into this old case involving Navigator Orland. You're talking about that really old one? The one that resulted in you trading places, yes. That's a surprise. Why are you telling me? To believe he's guilty of the crime he was convicted of. Chief, I really don't know why you believe I know the answer to this. I only know that he claims to be innocent to this day. You believe him? He's just never lied about anything else to me. Barbara Nava, are you holding up a carrier? here? So far, so good, Chief. Plants don't seem to be all that damaged. That's the most important thing. Good. How come you're visiting a farm? Just checking in on everyone? The case leads me here, actually. Really? Are you investigating the rain failure? Did someone do it on purpose? No, no, it's not that. Long story, I might have some questions for you. For me? Sure, ask away. Do you know what this is? Uh, yes, of course. It's a fertilizer we use pretty frequently in here. Is it possible that a non-farmer got their hands on it somehow a long time ago? Well, we're not allowed to give them out, and we keep a very strict inventory nowadays. Nowadays. My dad once told me that it wasn't always quite as strict, but the chemicals were always meant to be used by farmers exclusively. Is it possible that he gave some of them away here and there? I can't say for sure, but Rose begged him all the time, and he always turned her down as far as I know. Rose? It makes sense, she's obsessed with her plants. In any case, if my dad ever snuck out chemicals, it certainly ended a year ago, because that's when he died, yes. I was hoping to cycle left to get to the Orleans conviction, but that just went back to the beginning of the, the evidence locker. How well do you know Navigator Orland, if you don't mind me asking? We haven't talked much in years, honestly. Of course, I knew him well as a kid. I basically grew up around here when he was still a farmer. Are you familiar with Engineer Xena's case against him? Of course, that's why he left. It was a big drama, but I was still very young when it happened. I went over to Files. The most pertinent piece of evidence against him was a chemical compound used in a makeshift explosive. Hypothetically, is it possible that someone other than Orlin or your father could have accessed this fertilizer? Ooh, that's why you've been asking about all this. I really think I told you all I know already. Okay, well let's go see Rose. I know specifically what other questions we could ask while we're there, but I want to make it look like a logical chain of questions. Rather than jumping the gun just because I know the ending. This is Chief Security Stella. Yes, dear, come right in. My door is always open. I think I accidentally pressed E there twice. Okay, yeah, it says Janitor Rose, are you home? Okay. Alright, there's no greeting we can do, but we can immediately ask her about stuff. Let's try asking her about fertilizer. Janitor Rose, do you know what this is? Oh, yes, the object of my desires. I used to beg the farmers for a drop of this to help with my plants, but to no avail. So they never gave it to you. Do you think anyone else ever got their hands on it? Dear, I really don't know. Maybe they would have had a different response if I were crew. I brought a bonsai from Earth, and I watched it slowly wither away over the first year of the mission. I'm sure the fertilizer would have helped, but the farmers wouldn't budge. She probably doesn't know anything about the conviction, but let's ask. No, okay. She did mention specifically a bonsai, and it was also colored in text. Long time ago we got this, we can see how early ago. Let's ask her about it. Janitor Rose, have you seen this bonsai? It's beautiful. Is this a record from Earth? No, the bonsai is my dad's bunk right now. Really? This is a recent picture. Yeah, I guess my dad was good at taking care of it. Stella, dear, he's his wizard. I cannot fathom how he maintained it so well for all these years. Did he have some extra help from the farmers? I'm not sure, but I do have a hard time keeping the tree healthy now that it's my responsibility. It's incredibly hard. I brought a bonsai from Earth myself, but it died within a year. It sounds like we could have asked her about that at any point throughout the game. Let's head back to the farmers and ask them about this bonsai. Can you tell me anything about this tree? That's your old man's bonsai. I've heard the rumors. Is that a recent record of it? Yeah. I'll be damned. That's impressive. You should show it to Nava if you haven't already. Have you ever seen my dad's bonsai tree? No, that still exists. Yeah, take a look. I have a recent record of it. No way! How? How it survived for so long? Exactly. These were hard enough to grow back on Earth from what I've heard. I don't know. Maybe you have an idea how my dad did it. We have special chemicals up here that could make this possible, but without them, I honestly don't see how. Do you think he could have ever had access to them? I think I already told you everything about that. If he got his hands on the fertilizer, maybe from my dad over a year ago. 
Also, while we're at it, we could ask, try asking about the roses themselves, see if they know anything about that. Nope. And... I mean, it probably is nothing to really follow up on, but we still have to get to the elevator, so... Yep, nothing about the roses. The reason we're heading to the elevator is to go to the psychiatry ward. They mentioned Xena. Now, in earlier versions of this game, I could not access this room again because the dialogue was bugged. Once you had gotten access by speaking to the secretary or receptionist or doctor, or whoever that is at the front desk, and then you ever had to return or load the game back up, the door would be locked again, but you couldn't bring up the conversation about Xena as a topic to get access again. So that's kind of soft locked at this point. But this is kind of an optional quest, and you don't really need all of the clues to make the solution. So first, let's talk about the fertilizer. Zena, have a look at this record. Do you know what this is? I'm not sure. It's used in the farm area. Oh, it's the... The Chief William showed you this. How my dad get his hands on it? He just thought... Because it's part of the case against my ex-husband. He used this to break into my bunk. So I've heard. Thank you. Well, she brought up Chief William. Although we did talk about the dad a long time ago. Let's bring him up again. Wait, does he not exist in the... He's not in here any longer, is he? Okay... Weird. There's Alderich, there's Paul, but no chief? Okay, well, I was gonna just bring up the chief, but sure. Let's go ahead and go to the. Okay, so pressing W goes all the way to the bottom, but then you can't go press S to go down and cycle back up. In case you don't know what that means, is if I press up here, I'll start at the bottom, but I cannot press at the bottom to go to the top. All this weird UI stuff. Orleans Conviction. Cena, there's something I need to ask you about. I've learned about your involvement in a custody battle. Oh, did your... did your father tell you about this? Uh, yeah. Really, I can't believe he told you. Maybe I can trick her. Anyway, your custody battle with... Farmer Orlin, right? Yes, what about it? The custody battle... that happened very recently, right? Yes. How did it go for you? Assistant Chief Stella, I don't know if we should be talking about this. What makes you say that? It's just... I think your father has it under control. Of course, I just want to check in on his behalf. So he told you everything. So it's done. Did he use the, you know, the thing Dorian gave him for his little tree? Could you fill me in on the plan again? Oh, Stella, I think I said too much. Just tell your father I'm eternally grateful, will you? I will. Thank you, Xena. I hope you feel better soon. I told Xena that the custom battle had only happened recently. I don't feel great about tricking her, but she did say something very interesting. It seemed like my dad helped her shortly afterwards. The way she talked about it made it seem like it wasn't above board at all. She thought I was in on it and asked that he used the thing that Dorian gave him for his little tree. Hmm. Sounds like to me that... Father, dearest... So, oh, come on, it's still the same issue before I can't cycle to the top. Where is... Where is he, though? If the game removed him from me... I can't actually solve this. There he is. Okay. That's so weird. Fine. But yes, uh, Father Dearest decided to set a bomb up for somebody so that he would lose his job and possibly be unable to talk to Lewis ever again because Lewis never mentions his dad. I was going to submit. Chief, are you sure about this? Whether I got it right, whether I should report it, I'm sure about both. Did you know? I had no idea, Chief, and I frankly don't know if I can believe your findings here. Read my report. Of course, it's been way too long to prove it definitely. But you have to agree that everything points to my dad. I do. What do we do now? I have to tell Orlin. Will he be exonerated? Everything from here on out will depend on the Ethics Committee. I hope this will be worth it, Chief. See if he finally talks when you present him with the results. I'm sure I'll keep his word. Out of all the unbelievable and traumatizing events of those days, the revelation that my dad had destroyed the life of an innocent man was one of the things that hit me the hardest. My brain immediately scrambled to make excuses for him. He must have been trying to protect his friend Zena and her child from an abusive spouse. Even still, my father's blatant violation of the Codex just didn't fit the idealized image I had of him at the time. My whole life, I had aspired to be just as upstanding as him. 
Learning that he hadn't always lived up to that ideal himself was a tough pill to swallow. From the farm level that leads us out to floor three, we can check in on our bunk here and see if Chi Chi's back. Somehow, yeah. <laughs> Chi Chi! I don't know how you made it back, but I'm so glad you're here. Why did you keep running away? Are you getting bored in here? I just thought you liked this place. I'll let you out on your own once in a while, okay? Just be careful, it can be dangerous out there. Although you seem to handle yourself well. Who's the best girl? You are, that's right. Can you tell me about Chi Chi? All right, let's get out of here. Then we proceed up one flight of stairs. While we're here, I can also peek in under my dad's bunk, see how Ava's doing. Stella? Uh, yes, can I come in? Sure. I think I might have mashed E too many times again. Let's see real quick. Yeah, Stella said, is anyone in there? Because I'm running up to the door, mashing E so I can go faster. Sorry for the mess. I haven't had much time to clean it up yet. Plus, I feel a little weird going through your dad's stuff. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Let me know if you want to switch bunks. I'm up for it anytime. Thank you. I think I'll stay downstairs a little longer. We're all the way back here. Let's see if we got any good information out of you. Navigate, Orlin. I look into your case again. I... We have reason to believe that you were not the one who placed the makeshift explosive in Zena's bunk. Another party may have had access to the fertilizer that was used as evidence against you. Who? Chief William. Can you prove this? Not exactly, but I have multiple testimonies that point towards it. So will I be exonerated? That's up to the Ethics Committee. We'll have you retried in light of the new evidence. Our deal was that I look into it, which I did. I appreciate it, Chief. It'd be easy for you to find this out about your old man. I'm sure he had his reasons. Whatever the case may be, I always suspected him. I didn't want to tell you so you'd reach your own conclusions. Now to your end of the deal. No time to waste. Fair is fair. Here's what I can tell you about the power outage. I was right next door on the bridge when it went down, holding down the fort while everybody was out celebrating arrival day. Can anyone corroborate that you were there? It was on duty there, and there are people who know I was, but I was alone. So nobody can testify to seeing you on the bridge and the navigation was being hacked. Correct. And nobody can testify that you didn't slip into the navigation room right next door, hypothetically. Right. You have to take my word for it, Chief. When the ring stopped, I was knocked around a little, but I got back up on my feet just a few seconds later. It was completely dark for a moment, and I didn't know where I was exactly as I was stumbling forward. When the emergency lights came on, I found myself in the hallway with a clear view of the navigation room door. All the door lights came back on around the same time, and I believe that the doors hadn't worked up until that point, meaning that whoever hacked the navigation and caused the outage was still inside the navigation room. That is until I saw the doors open. The person stumbled out into the hallway and booked it towards the command area. You mean to tell me that you saw the hacker? I'm sure of it. Problem is, I couldn't make out much because only the emergency lights were on. I didn't see what color of uniform they were wearing, but the silhouette was certainly that of a man. That is excellent information. Thank you. Weren't you suspicious of this man running away? Did you go after him? Of course I knew that nobody was officially working in the navigation room at the time, but I didn't think much of it at first. I was rattled by the ring failure and didn't think it had anything to do with what went down in the navigation room. Besides, one person running didn't exactly stand out much in the chaos of the aftermath. That makes sense. What did you do next? Did you enter the navigation room? No, I went to the residential area to help everybody there. I didn't come back here until a good hour later. I see. Did you tell anyone else about that, any of this? No. Good. Please keep it that way for the time being. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you, Chief. Paul Saito, discover William's dark secret. And we got a message from Bodo. Chief, there's a crowd gathering at the residential area. I don't like this one bit. Posted a few men nearby. It's asking about the honorary badge. Would you take a look at the record of this badge here for a second? Does it look familiar? We see it here on this portrait. Of course, I have one of those myself. Would you mind telling me who else has one? All of us working in the navigation room received it. We pulled a few all-nighters during a crisis recently. All of you. Are you sure? Actually, now that you mention it, Asher didn't get one. He couldn't keep up because of his illness, and he wasn't there for most of it. So all navigators have this badge except Asher. All five of us working in the navigation room, navigators and engineers, except Asher. I see. Thank you. Oops, wrong one. He has nothing to say about the badge. It's because they share a hive mind, apparently. And we're back in the server room. So you have to tell me what felt better. <laughs> Let's ask her about this honorary badge. I'm nothing to say about that right now. Oh, you guys don't want to talk about this. Okay. Oh, we still have this to take care of. 
This guy doesn't have anything to do with the badge, but he does have to do with Joseph's alibi, who said that he was talking to Yaha along with Farid. I have a question for you, if I may. What were you doing when the power outage occurred? I was in the residential area, Chief, celebrating arrival day. Do you remember who you were with? I was chatting with Navigator Joseph and Dr. Yaha at the bar. We had been there for a while before the lights went out. Thank you. Sure thing, Chief. Let's see if we can confirm that as well with a third witness testimony. Dr. Yaha, I have a quick question for you. What is it, Chief? Where were you at the exact moment the power outage occurred? I was at the bar in the residential area. Who are you with? I was talking to Farrah and Joseph. Why do you ask? Just trying to gather some facts about the incident. Thank you. There's nothing for us in the residential area if we check, but we can see somebody in the armory. Chief Stella? What can I do for you? Just checking in. How are the enforcers doing? Some equipment got damaged, but injuries tend to be minor thanks to our armor. The lockers and supplies are quite the mess as you can see. I'm about to clean them up. Are the weapons and armor all functional? I can't say for sure until I go through all of it, but they seem largely unscathed, just in disarray. Good, thank you for your report. And we have completed all of our current caseload. Let's go ahead and return to the security office. You can see that nothing exists in our cases other than general notes about the navigators. And that's more of a long-term commitment. Sergeants, we need to discuss our next steps. Time is running out. About the paper that was recycled at the Earth Museum this morning. We they just started reviewing the data. So far, we haven't been able to. We all just get a message at the same time. The crew no longer has a situation under control. None of us voted for this leadership. What the hell is this? You think everybody received this? At least it reads like it was intended that way. How is this possible? It says the sender is anonymous. I've never seen this in my life. Neither have I. I'm calling programmer Aaron. It shouldn't be possible on a technical level. All our messages in our network have a sender. Yes, Sergeant Audrey. Programmer Aaron, did you just receive an anonymous message? I, uh, yeah? Can you trace it? It says the sender is anonymous. I'm at the PDA terminal now. Just give me a moment, please. It's strange. This looks like it was sent from outside the network. As in, not from the Zephyr. No, no, no. It's from somewhere on the ship, but the server has no ID. What does that mean? It's almost like someone set up their own server to send this message to the whole network. Where? How? I'm sorry, Chief. It's too early to tell. Barrett and I will try to work it out as quickly as possible. Good. I'll come see you down in the network area, Troy. Talk to you then, Chief. If he is right, we have to find that server. Maybe I shouldn't ask around about it too openly. I'll go to the network area and see if they have any leads. At the time everybody received the ominous message, I wasn't yet aware of the broad support it would quickly garner in the general population. A crowd started forming in the residential area. Tensions would soon grow to the point that the captain decided to issue a partial lockdown of the ship. I don't think it helped the situation. The guys down in the network area are probably our best bet right now. Talk to programmer Aaron or engineer Farron and see if they can provide any leads. Apparently, Captain has nothing to say about the secret server message. Okay. It just never really surprised me how unhelpful everybody is. This was the quest that I had discovered before the painkillers. I never found the painkillers mission until much later. And it's because of I was the way I was solving this quest, I immediately saw the connection between the bunk names and the medicine codes. I mentioned I could talk to both engineers, so let's go and do that. Well, one's of a programmer. Have you been able to find anything about the secret server? By now, we're sure that it exists. We're even able to ping it. Is there a way to find its physical location? Let me think. Not from here. If you get readouts of the ping from different locations on the ship, you may be able to deduce it. I'm sorry, what does that mean? The ping indicates how long it takes to communicate between two points in the network. I'll enable your PDA to ping the server. The further you are away from it, the higher the ping. It should go up to 100 on the opposite side of the rate. So it's zero when I'm right on top of it. Correct. What if a few floors above or underneath the server? That should have a negligible effect. What really counts is distance along the rig. How do I perform this ping on my PDA? You have to hook it up to a network cable around the ship. It's usually not that easy because they're inside the walls, but a few of them were exposed in the ring malfunction. They run along the hallways, which have a unique pattern of blue and white stripes. Just try to find one per area. That should be enough to triangulate the location. One of them is right outside this room in the corridor. You can start there. I saw more exposed network cables and hallways across the ship, but I don't remember where exactly. Thank you very much. I'll go look for them. Anything else I should know? Actually, two more things. The server isn't providing an exact response in milliseconds, so your readout will only indicate whether the ping is low, medium, or high. A low ping is below 33 milliseconds, a medium is between 34 and 66, and high is between 67 and 100. 
a little ping means the server is nearby, right? Exactly. Anyway, second, each readout will ping some reference locations both spin word and anti spin word. You'll see what I mean. Good luck, Chief. Thank you. Let's go see if Aaron has anything to say, but I think that when I did this the first time, I spoke to Aaron about it, so it's probably the exact same conversation. Yeah, so it won't replay in this case. What we will be looking for are these blue cords all over the place. And once we collect all the information, I will show you my infographic that I've made. We've got the inner hole ping. Go up to floor three. Or floor two, that is. Option three. Right outside the brig. Main area ping. Okay. Let's go and use the fast travel. Right, there's one outside the museum. I think it would have been faster just to walk. And then the residential zone and hospital. As we can see, there's no nothing new from the Bodo's message saying that there's a crowd starting in the residential area. That's probably just to let me know that if we return to the security complex, it'll trigger this server quest. And the last one here in the hospital wing. Bio area ping. Okay. Easiest way to do this is to show you pictures on how I ended up dealing with this. Some network cables came loose in the ship's hallways during the power outage. I could hook up my PDA to them and get a readout of the ping to the secret server. I might be able to triangulate its exact location this way. I'll get one of three readouts per cable. 0 to 33 milliseconds, 33 to 66, 67 to 100. Take a look at our evidence. We have five different locations. Let's start with the first one in the inner hole. 33 to 67 with varying points here, which I will go and just showcase on the map. Okay, that was my first try at using OBS to automatically switch scenes rather than edit it in post-production. We'll see how it pans out. Whoops, that's me, that was me trying to zoom in, sorry. This is the technical area it, it counts as when we're hovering around the region, but this is specifically where I found the cables. That would be the inner hole, and we have anti-spin word and spin word. Spin were to be to the right, and we found the following locations. We have the activities room and the cafe. We take a look at our notes. We see 33 milliseconds activities room, 67 milliseconds the cafe. So that's that's what we have so far. And then we go anti spin word. And for anti spin word, we have the assistant captain's bunk in the command area and the train station in the bio area. Okay, let's take a look at those two. I'm assuming, uh, this was just an assumption on my part, but they did say n vertical height was negligible. I'm assuming that the assistant captain's bunk would be below the captain's bunk. Because at least for the chief and assistant chief was this way. There are floors we can't actually access, such as this floor and this floor. I will notice when we enter the elevator. So I'm going to say that this or the assistant captain's bunk at the low milliseconds. And then we had the tram in the bio area. If we combine these two together, it is a ping between 33 to 67 milliseconds. So it's going to be between all of these ranges. This will be our inner hole search radius. Okay, and we've got four more to go. But I just want you to know that's how I did this. The next area we went to was the command area. So we have these locations. Again, there's four total locations. The public area. That's where the arrival day stuff is taking place. You'll note that it actually says between 0 and 33 milliseconds. So we're going to be really only working with the 33 millisecond stuff here. We've got from the Earth Museum, pinging the inner hole A and the train station public area. We can utilize the other information if we want, but it's not going to be necessary for this explanation. 
So here is the Earth Museum, and we have the inner hole A, as well as the train station in the public area. So with that in mind, our search radius looks something like this. The next area is the residential zone. We have public area, inner hole, residential area, and bio area. Let's mark those on our map. And we'll get something that looks like this. We're looking for anything between 33 and 67, so our coloring will look more like this. Finally, we have the bio area. It is 67 to 100, so this one is the furthest away from the server. And anything we're looking for is past the bunk L4A and past the locker room. I want you to bear in mind, though, that I don't draw in, I guess, a ring. So when we look at our picture here, this is to the right, spinward. Okay. And this is to the left. I could just repaste the whole thing, but I... I think I think seeing it this way also kind of gives you a visualization of how we would arrange this. What we're looking for is anything beyond the 67 range. That's what we're left with. Leaving like this actually works out for me. Okay. You can actually solve this puzzle with just a couple pieces. Let's go ahead and flip on all of those layers and see what it looks like. All right, that isn't super helpful. This is a little bit too much information. Let's start narrowing down some of our options. Let's try turning off inner hole and command area. We have already the weight room, which we've never been in, the conference room, and the maintenance room, also which we've never been in. Okay, let's try narrowing down just a bit more. Let's turn all those off and then we'll turn on the inner hole and command area. Well, there's only one of these that are inside both of those pings. That is the maintenance room. Let's go ahead and submit maintenance room. Did you find it? Let me have a look at that file. The maintenance room. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Get over there now. I'm sending back up. I think the only purpose of the gym is to try to distract you on this particular case. Chief Stella. Actually, I think that's supposed to be a girl, because I used a she pronoun for Bodo. Enforce a Bodo. The door is shut tight. Meaning? It's not opening for anyone. Overrides don't work either. You have to break it open. Great. How long that's gonna take? At an hour at least, maybe a few. Time is running out. Do whatever it takes to speed up the process. Alert the sergeants immediately once it's open, okay? Understood, Chief. I suppose that means we found the right room at least. The maintenance room in the inner hall B is sealed shut. My sergeants will notify me as soon as we've managed to break it open. And Captain Talia wants to see me at our office again to discuss the next steps. For comms. I meant to say this earlier, but I couldn't get it out. It wasn't entirely fair for me to project old grievances onto you. I apologize for being so abrasive. Talia, good work on your next on your progress, Chief. Come see me at my office. We need to discuss our next steps. With all due respect, Captain, being a leader doesn't mean you get to decide everything by yourself. You make it sound like I'm being selfish. This couldn't be further from the truth. My feelings and opinions matter just as much in this context as yours do. They don't. As a servant of a mission, all my decisions aim to maximize its chances of success. You seem to have forgotten that the same goes for you and everyone on this ship. Captain, the mission... Somebody felt strongly enough to sabotage it. The crew was completely blindsided. I think it's time for everyone to come together and have an open conversation about what people want. You think openly addressing grievances will jeopardize the mission further, but I think it's the only way to salvage it. I saw where we're going. The people deserve to know. Have you ever told anyone else about the message? Not the full truth. Not about Iris. Don't mention the... What did you say then? And to whom? Some of my colleagues know the truth about Otis. Who? I don't know if I want to trust you with that knowledge. Out with it. You were all about sharing information just a minute ago. Eric and Asher, and my daughter. You made a promise, Navigator Joseph. You made me promise. There's a difference. Sorry to intrude. May I ask what's going on here? Gee, what did you... Navigator Joseph has some concerns that we cannot address in our current situation. He is threatening to escalate them in a way that could quickly become a security concern. Telling people the truth is not a... Please place him under house arrest. 
only until we have some answers and solutions for the current crisis. Security concerns are my responsibility. I need to assess the situation myself to see if it warrants a house arrest. Tell me what you were talking about. Chief? Place him under house arrest, then I'll tell you. No. Chief. That's right, I'm the chief, and based on what I know, house arrest would be excessive in this case. Point me to the part of the codex he violated. You are free to go, Navigator Joseph. Thank you, Chief. I'll be at my place of work. Captain, please, think about what I said. Do you have any idea what you just did? How could I? You're not telling me what it's really about. And you just proved to me beyond a shadow of doubt that you cannot be trusted with that information. Why did you call me here in the first place? You already believe to have found this location of the secret server. Good. The matter of the painkillers you found in the navigation room seems resolved for now. And for Navigator Orland's old case, we will have to talk about the results of that one sometime in the future. As to your previous cases and their outcomes, Enforcer Bodo has been wearing down Engineer Lewis in the brig, but so far it seems he doesn't really know much. We will probably send him back to his bunk soon and place him under house arrest for now. Still no trace of Engineer Geraldo since the incident. He seems to know we're onto him. There goes a few new things. Well, let's take a look at that. Toms. Stella, I found something you need to see. Come to the laboratory in the bio area as soon as you can. I'm waiting for you there. Okay. Talia Seeger. The captain seems to know something about Otis, the star that the Zephyr has changed course to. Navigator Joseph urged Talia to share it with the population. We could try asking her about it, but I don't think we're going to get anywhere with this. Sounds like something you need to figure out for yourself. Okay. Well, let's try inquiring to Joseph to see if he'll let us know. But whatever this secret is, Eric and Asher know. Are you going to talk about this, old man? I have nothing to say about that right now. Okay, thanks. Well, let's go see what... Uh, what's his name wanted? I don't even remember his name. He's obviously not in the security office, but it wouldn't hurt to go check it out anyways. Can you tell me where what's his face is? Sergeant Paul wants to talk to me. Have you seen him? He left a short while ago. Said he wanted to take a break at his bunk. Thank you. Sergeant Alderick says that Sergeant Paul went to his bunk, which is just across the park bridge from the security office, right below mine. Either Paul lied about being there, or about being in the lab. Paul, did you send me a message to come see you? Just now? No. You didn't? About coming to the lab. The lab. Why would I want to meet you there? I don't know. Look. This? I didn't send this. When is the last time I called you Stella? It's either Stell or Chief when my dad is around. So who sent it? And how does it show up in our thread? I don't know, but my first guess is the hidden server was used for it. If they can use it to send an anonymous broadcast, who knows what else it's good for? Right. What do we do now? Somebody's clearly trying to set a trap for me. Let's go see who it is. Just what I was thinking. I'll get Enforcer Bodo to back us up. And I'll go warn the captain about the imposter message in person. Good. Let's meet at the locker room. Time to gear up. Hello? Paul? Huh? Be ready. Paul, oh, are you here? I got your message. Why are we meeting here? What the? Michio. What's up, Chief? What are you doing? I need you to stay here for a while. I'll be back soon. Got to take care of something. Take care of what? I've said too much. I may be a little drunk. Michio, let me out of here. This isn't funny. Damn right this isn't funny. It's dead serious, Chief. What are you talking about? You want to chat? I'm your captive audience. Audience, this is supposed to be a dialogue, Chief. But you're not familiar with the concept. I get it. You're no better than your father, you know that? I feel silly for having a moment of hope when you took over. Frankly, I'm not sure what I was hoping for. Michio, did you? What? No, I don't know what happened to your dad. Thought maybe the captain wanted to get rid of him or something. But that's beside the point. What is the point, then? The point? The point is I want no goddamn kid next year. I don't want to work at the goddamn museum. I never wanted to be on this goddamn ship or its goddamn mission. How do you do it, Stella? Don't you have a will of your own? A brain? A heart? I... You think about that while I run some errands. The clock's ticking. See you real soon, Chief. 
You gotta be kidding me. Mitchell, show me your hands. Why? Not like I could have a gun. The privilege of violence is all yours. Now! Please, Michio, don't make a huge mistake now. Go ahead, kid. Make my day. You've never been afraid to show your true colors, Bodo. I respect that. Enforcer, Bodo. Michio, raise your hands. You are under arrest. Fine. Not like I care. Bring me to a different room in this giant space prison. Thank you for coming. Let's get right to it. The navigators say that we have approximately four hours left until we can no longer course correct. They continue trying to get back into the system, but they have remained unsuccessful so far. There is a good chance one of them is the hacker, still actively sabotaging their efforts. Four hours are a very short time frame for finding the culprit, persuading them to let us back in and then initiating the maneuver. But there is some good news. Enforcer Bodo just informed me that we are able to break open the maintenance room and locate the secret server. We've decided to leave it turned on and connected for now so we can extract data in identifying the insurgents. The only reason we haven't done this yet is the four-digit pin protecting the server. Our enforcers in the break have been questioning the suspects we captured about it. I suppose historian Michio's involvement with the group wasn't a surprise to anyone here. He is proving to be as stubborn as ever, but it sounds like he may have slipped up in his cockiness. Assistant caretaker Ocean has apparently divulged information that could be useful. And finally, as soon as we learned of Michio's involvement with the group, enforcers raided his bunk. They found engineer Geraldo hiding out there and brought him to the brig for questioning. It seems like they were able to extract some partial information on the pin out of him. I'm forwarding everything we have to your PDA. On a different note, the crowd has been gathering at the residential area. The nature of this gathering is not entirely clear, but it seems spontaneous rather than centrally organized. People want answers and are exchanging information amongst themselves, I understand it. But if tensions boil over, the situation may quickly turn volatile. We have posted enforcers on the scene to keep an eye on the crowd. In addition, we have temporarily locked access to and from the public and residential areas. Our forces were already stretched thin, and too many things are happening we need to keep tabs on. Stay vigilant, as we are at our most vulnerable right now. With all due respect, Captain, this sounds like it could be resolved if you address the crowd personally. To tell them what? We're not out of the woods yet. I will talk to the population as soon as we have all the answers we're looking for, which leads me to my final point. I need you to bring me the person who hacked the navigation. If you can't find them now, it'll be too late. Dismissed. This is your final case. Submitting it sets in motion an unstoppable series of events that would decide the Zephyr's future, before crossing this point of no return, tie up any loose ends that may still exist. I would say it's a little late for that because if you didn't find Chi-Chi, you have two areas that are locked. So I would say going to the laboratory is the actual point of no return. But saying it at that time would warn the player of a trap. You were ready to tell me your secret yet? Nope. Okay. How about you guys? You know anything about the secret? Nope. All right. You tell me anything more about the server that I figured out all by myself? Nope. All right. You guys are so helpful. All of your just wonderful bastions of intelligence and, and assistance. We got some new comms. It takes a little while because it's loading up every line of dialogue we've had in the game. That's why it takes a while to load up the comms menu. Chief, the captain ordered me to send over the relevant transcripts from our interrogations with the suspects you brought in. Here is all they said about the pin to their server. I don't know if it's enough to deduce all four digits. It is. I'm telling you, I have zero technical understanding. How stupid do you think I am? You do not have to have built the damn thing to know the pin. I swear I forgot it. I keep having to come up with mnemonic devices for the simplest things. Tell me the mnemonic device then. Tell me! I had more, but all I remember is this. The first two numbers have the same sum as the last two. So, adding the first two numbers gets you the same result as adding together the last two? What a convoluted way to remember something. I swear it's the truth. My brain is just weird. Look, I'm trying to help you. Try harder. Start with the seven. I'm sure about that. Seven, eight, four, five. Seven, four, six, five. I remember the last one being a five. What kind of amateur revolt is this? Stop messing with me. You have to remember the full thing. Look, we did not write it down anywhere for safety, and I barely ever touched the device. You're digging your own grave, kid. Believe me, I am very scared. Give me the code. This is the last time I'm asking nicely. How about this? I give you one number and you guess the rest. That should narrow it down just enough. I am done with your crap. Okay, listen. Listen, stop. I'll give you all four numbers. I'm listening. 26. 2, 6, and then... No, no. 26 is all four numbers. Add it together. Punk! All right, that's actually, that, that is plenty of information to work with. All right, taking a look at our information. 
I whipped up this spreadsheet that really quickly combines all the facts that we have. On the column F, we have false. If we manage to find the right information, it'll say true. Gerardo already gave us 7 and 5. So that's plenty to start out with. Oceana says the first two numbers have the same sum as the last two. Alright, we could try plugging in 5 and 7 here. And that will make her statement true, but Michio's is still not true. It all needs to add up to 26. So we can actually combine that, make this real quick. What does this all add to? It adds a 24. So we actually need two more numbers. Okay. And if they both have to be weighted the same, then meaning number one and two have to add up to three and four, then we add, need to add one number to each. One number to two and one number to three. Voila. Or as my kid says, viola. <laughs> Seven, six, eight, five. Piece of cake. With the pin and ham, let's head on over. This is the final stage of the game. I know that the achievement set act two, but because some of these events can be taking place at different times, it really is a very, very short mission. As I'm assuming that you can probably see from the time left in the video. Visit all the places in the ship. We've never been into the gym room, but again, that's probably just for the sole sake of throwing you off on figure out where the server is. Okay, so it was seven, six, eight, five. I entered the pin and held my breath. After a moment, the lock screen made way to an unfamiliar rudimentary interface. There it all was, in white letters on a black background. A plot to radically change life on the Zephyr forever. My eyes widened as I read on and realized that something resembling a coup was imminent. The senders were using code names, and I had no idea who any of them were, except for one, the leader of the entire operation. I am staying in the chief's bunk, she had written. Ava, I was blind with anger. Not because she was sabotaging the mission. I felt a deep sense of personal betrayal. All I could think was that our entire relationship must have been a charade. That she had been trying to get close to me in order to convert me, or spy on me, or get me out of the way easily once the time was right. I didn't report to the captain or my sergeants. This was between me and her. Ava? Zella, I didn't hear you coming. Are you okay? You look upset. Stop feigning concern. Just stop. You never really cared, did you? What's going on, Stella? You were just trying to get close to me. How long have you been planning this? Oh, shoot. Years? Has it been years? Stella, our personal relationship has nothing to do with- Stop! Teacher Ava, I am placing you under arrest for a gross violation of the Codex. You are being charged of systematically undermining key objectives of the mission by stoking unrest in the population. It's- it's not too late to pick a side, Stella. You're the head of the whole executive branch on the ship. The monopoly on violence is all yours. Stop! If you tell people to give up their weapons, they will. You're making it worse for yourself. All I want is to make it better for everyone. No single person should have the power you have. Doesn't it feel like a burden at times? As things stand, nobody can free you from it but yourself. Stop! Enough! I'm going to ask you something really important and you have to be honest with me. But we get the Zephyr back on its course. What? The course change. How do we undo it? Can you let the navigators back into their system? Okay, I know you won't believe this, but neither I nor any of my people have the slightest idea who hacked the navigation. Bullcrap! I told you that you wouldn't believe me. Our whole aim is to democratize the way things work on this ship. We want to hold votes on major decisions like this. The hacker imposed their own will in a way that goes against our core principles. I hate that you're making sense right now. Is there any way you can help us find the culprit within the next few hours? You seem to have your own network going. Maybe somebody knows something. We've already been trying to figure, work this out ourselves unsuccessfully. Okay, here's what's going to happen. I'll have you escorted to the captain. She's on the bridge. The forces will be permitted to use deadly force if you try something stupid. Do you understand me? Yes. The jig is up. Go to the captain and tell her everything you know. I'll join you shortly. I have to find the hacker first. I'm running out of time. Stella, are you sure? I am sure. Go. 
we still need to figure out what this secret is. And we're no closer to finding it. But he did say Eric and Asher know. We can't get to Asher, but we can get to Eric. So to that extent, let's head back to the basement. It's mighty convenient that Ava happened to be in the non-lockdown part of the ship so that we can still access her. Can I borrow your attention again for a moment? Navigator Joseph was at the captain's office earlier. Do you know why? No idea, Chief. He said something about Otis and Iris. Iris? Otis is a star we've known for a long time. Nothing secret about it. So neither of you know what Joseph wanted from the captain? I... No. Are you sure? Why don't you ask Joseph? Of course, I'm asking him too. Is this all you have to say? Stella! Noelia? My dad messaged me about everything that went down at the captain's office. Oh, thank you for not locking him up. He said it was very surprised you let him go. Well, it was my judgment that he didn't pose a direct threat. He did the right thing. I know he doesn't want me to tell you, but I feel like you should know the truth about Otis. The captain told you about the course change. Yes. Did she tell you where we're going? She said there's another star there. Not just a star, Stella. A planet. She didn't tell you about Otis B, did she? Tell me what? Noelia, what are you saying? My dad was working late one night when a message from Earth came in. The captain was with him. Our plot, of course, is going to get us very close to a star called Otis, extremely close to an interstellar travel turn. Of course, we knew this already, and we thought we knew everything about Otis since long before the Zephyr was even built. But the message that night changed everything. Tell me what it said. One of the planets in the system has become viable, fit for human life. What? That's impossible! Earth has developed a new terraforming technology. Can we do it? Can we go and live on this planet? It seems that way. So, did the mission change? No, this was supposed to stay a secret, only for the captain's eyes. Why for her eyes? Why would they tell any one of us? If they want us to go to USD, it makes no sense to me. Did you see the message? No, only my dad and Talia did. You're saying we could be breathing a natural atmosphere within just a few years. That's what you're saying? Yes. Have you told anyone else? No, it's been very hard. I've been wrestling with it for months. Our closest approach is going to come up next week, and I've been feeling the pressure mounting every day. I think my dad has felt the same for a while, but we try to avoid the topic. This is... a lot. This is Stella. I don't know either why you Earth informed us about this. And I don't fully understand why we weren't ordered to change course right then and there. Our mission is to bring humanity to a new planet, so why not this one? Noelia, did you change the ship's course? No, no, I swear I didn't. Were you going to do anything? I don't know, but you know what I think? I think Talia's son got too close to the truth. Curtis, why do you think so? We were pretty close up until recently. I often saw him at work on my way there. But he started acting paranoid a few weeks ago, and it got worse pretty quickly. I asked him about it multiple times, but he kept beating around the bush. When he was put in the psych ward, it seemed like Talia tried to avoid addressing it completely. But of course, she had to say something about it eventually, and it was very cryptic if you remember. She said he was acting overly paranoid. Didn't she just say the same? Yes, but what if he actually had a reason to? What if he was afraid Talia had him put away and medicated to keep him from talking? So you think he found out the truth about Otis? Or maybe Talia told him about it in confidence? Yes, something like that. I'm not entirely sure. I would have asked him already if I was allowed to visit him in the psych ward. I can visit anyone there as long as I say it's for a case. That's what I was getting at. I should definitely see what he has to say. Otis B clearly plays a huge role in all this, and maybe Curtis knows something crucial about it. Thank you for telling me all this. Good luck, Stella. I hope you do the right thing. It's hard to describe what I felt in that moment. It was like the prospect of spending my life on a planet would not fit into my brain. It had taken me so long to come to terms with the fact that I would die on the ship. I didn't want to relitigate the issue just to set myself up for more disappointment. For a good while, I tried not to think about it at all. Talia had clearly kept this from me, and I began to wonder what else she was hiding. Her story still didn't fully make sense. How could we use that new technology? Wouldn't Earth have to send something? Materials? Blueprints? Would they even work with us at all if we failed to complete the mission? Besides, terraforming was a process that could take decades or even hundreds of years. There were so many questions I could have asked, maybe should have asked, if only I had taken two seconds to think about it logically. We're hot on the tales of the truth. Assistant Captain Curtis, I need to talk to you about something very important. Do you feel like you're in the right state of mind? Are you asking me if I'm too crazy to be a reliable source? 
No, I'm asking if you're too medicated. No, I'm barely getting any meds at this point. My mom pushed for a stronger medication when I got here, but they stopped giving me that stuff after a few days. In that case, I need to ask you something. I overheard an argument between Navigator Joseph and Talia earlier. Do you have any idea what that could have been about? I know a lot of people have a lot of problems with their style, so not in particular. So there's nothing that the Navigator specifically may know about. What are you getting at? Alright, listen, I've received information that you may have been looking into Talia's affair. Wait, did she put you up to this? No, on the contrary, she seems to be hiding something, and I want to know what you are able to out. You were trying to dig into Talia's secrets. What was it you were after? Let it go. It would just make things more complicated if you knew. Did she have you thrown in here when you confronted her? No, nothing like that. I didn't confront her about anything. So you were trying to get into her computer, her PDA records. And where on this ship would I get my hands on those? Show Curtis the correct series of clues to answer his questions. He won't talk unless you show him that you have dead rights. Well, where would he get those records? Now, this is not the correct answer, but this is getting a dialogue trigger from him in that we can't even ask about it the second time. So the game obviously flags or counts this. PDA network terminal. That's not a place on the ship. I'm asking where I would go to get access to a network like this. I don't even know why they bother with that. I think they should just give you the answer for that. The network office, the network access point? I guess, but I'm not clear to be down there. I would have had to break in, and I doubt you have proof of forced entry. So I guess if you didn't scan this in the beginning of the game, you'll be out of luck. Broken door. That doesn't mean anything. But assuming just for a second I was down there, what network would I have tried to get into? Now we can ask about the PDA? You... You stole backups on the PDA network, didn't you? Stella? And I saw you that night, didn't I? It was an accident, I swear. I didn't mean for things to go down that way. You killed my dad! Stella, I couldn't have possibly have known that you killed my dad! I... Assistant Captain Curtis, I am placing you under arrest for the murder of the Chief of Security. I am so sorry for what happened. Please listen to me. No! We will have a proper conversation in the brig, and then you're going to stay there for a long, long time. The brig. What difference will it make to this place? My own mother locked me away already. I'm stuck in a room on this ship now, and we were always going to be stuck on this ship together. So we were always going to have to work together. Not if I... Not if I shoot you. Then I wouldn't be able to tell you what I found. I know the truth about Otis B. What else could you possibly have to offer to me? You know? I know we don't have to be stuck on this ship. How did you get your hands on the message? I didn't. I was told about it. So tell me one good reason not to... Do you know who sent the message? Of course, it came from Earth. Did Talia tell you that? Why would you believe her? What does it matter? Stella, why would Earth tell us about this? Don't you think they'd anticipate a huge risk of abandoning the mission? Who else would? The message was sent from another ship. Another ship? But where? The only one. The one egg in the second basket. Not anymore. Now we're just the backup egg in the third basket. Are you kidding me? You're just saying anything now to get out of this. Or maybe Talia keeps lying to you and everybody else. She would protect the mission at any cost. Of course, she doesn't want anyone to know about the Iris. The Iris? Joseph mentioned that name to her. Tell me everything you know. If you're lying about this, I will shoot you later. Twice. Deal. Stella, I didn't mean to harm you or William. I saw an opportunity to create a distraction, and it went horribly wrong. For what it's worth, I think about the events of that night every day. It's eating me up. I don't care that you suffer. Do you have any idea how I feel? I know. I understand. What is the iris? I only know what the message said. We are forbidden from contacting us when someone on the ship went rogue. They thought we should know. There were known risks when the Zephyr was first conceived, but humanity was desperate. Many of those risks were associated with the length of its mission. A lot can change in 130 years, especially technology. They considered that maybe a better propulsion method would come along just a decade later and cut the travel time in half or that other nearby planets would become viable for human life while the Zephyr was already en route to Otis. And the latter is exactly what happened. They were already drawing up plans for another generation ship at that point. As soon as the Iris was finished, it set course for Otis B. All this happened years ago, unbeknownst to anyone here. When we received their communication a few months ago, the Iris is a mere two years away from the Otis system. This is not even technically a generation ship. Their total travel time is just about 25 years. My god. My god. So it might even meet... Not the humans. If we changed course to Otis, yes, they'd already be there. Curtis. We have changed course, or rather we still are. What? Why do you think the power went out? The engine was turned on without proper procedure and caused a full reboot. If we don't course correct within the next few hours, we'd be en route to Otis for good. No. Don't pretend like you didn't know about this. 
I had no idea, I swear. I thought, you didn't orchestrate this whole thing? Stella, I'm telling the truth. I have no interest in being shot twice. Besides, how would I pull that off? I was barely able to talk to anyone for the past month. We are using the secret server. I have no idea what you're talking about. Without my PDA, I can't connect to any server, secret or otherwise. That's a good point. I have to find the culprit and force them to let us back into the system. Do you have the slightest idea who it could have been? If they're trying to get to Otis B, then I assume they know we could settle there. They don't necessarily know about the Iris. Just that there's a new terraforming technology we may be able to use. Whoever got wind of that and is sick of life on the ship, that's your guy. Agreed. I have to go find them before it's too late. Curtis? I cannot forgive you for what you did. You will have to stand trial for the murder of my father. I understand. Stella, do you want us to course correct back to Euros? It's our mission. My head was spinning. For over a month, the mystery surrounding my dad's death had constantly occupied my mind. There was a brief moment of relief, a weight lifted off my shoulders when I found out who was responsible and why he did what he did. The feeling was immediately overshadowed when I realized the scope of the situation. Everything finally fell into place. Of course, Earth had never told us about Otis B. Of course, the Zephyr would never be able to terraform it. The Iris was the final missing piece that the Captain had tried to keep from us. I couldn't fathom the possibility of meeting other people on Otis B. How many were there? What were they like? I started daydreaming of blue skies on an alien world. An ocean of friendly faces in unfamiliar uniforms. Looking back, I felt isolated on the Zephyr. I harbored hope that meeting people in a new context would be my chance to reinvent myself and my place in society. At the same time, I realized how selfish my thoughts were. It would be pointless to go to Otis B knowing that humans were already settling there, when our whole mission was to bring humanity to a new place. Fuel is running out due to the ongoing maneuver. We have very little time before the course can no longer be changed back. I need to see if I'm able to figure out the culprit based on everything I've learned. And unfortunately, you do have to sort through your entire general stack. Instead of it transferring it, the evidence to the relevant case, they just leave it for you to sort. I, I think this could be a section at the end that could be improved. Okay, let's just keep an eye out for any of the highlighted parts. The hacker is a man. All right, remember that we have five total Scrolling all the way to the top, we have five total suspects. Noelia, Orland, Joseph, Eric, and Asher. If it's a man, we rule out Noelia. Right. And that's according to Orland's testimony. So unfortunately, we're also going to rule out Orland in this case. Joseph said that he was speaking with two people, Yaha and Farid. So that, and his alibi is confirmed, corroborated by those two. Eric, we're not able to ask him for his, any sort of information from him, so we're just going to have to use process of elimination. Asher, he was not awarded the badge, and according to him, it was someone with a badge that must have hacked the terminals. <laughs> Again, according to him. Orlin and Asher, I feel that this should not actually rule them out, but according to the game, it does. So it's not Noelia, Orlin, Joseph, or Asher. Our remaining person of interest is Eric, the engineer. Let's go and submit this. Use the mouse for this, because it's way easier just to move things around for this menu, at least. This is it. I should forward the results to my sergeant and get to the bridge. Talia is waiting for me to report to her. Time to confront Ava as well. She and the captain must have had an interesting talk already. Don't know why you need to load. I'm already on the bridge, because I'm just that good. Loading the whole ending thing, I'm sure. Doesn't mean I can't make fun of it. In the final hour before things came to a head, you could cut the tension in the command area with a knife. The crew knew that there was very little time left to save the mission. The population, meanwhile, knew barely anything at all, which understandably upset them. By now, Talia had ordered a partial lockdown of the ship for fear of intervention. It was an unprecedented move, a drastic decision even by her standards. She barely even seemed to trust the crew around her. It was somewhat understandable, but I couldn't help but feel that she had some responsibility for her predicament. She had increasingly avoided direct communication with the general population for a long time, and now she was afraid they would make their voices heard no matter what. She was probably aware of the bitter irony herself. Move. Wait, what is my son doing here? I have no idea. Dad! Navigator Eric. 
We have known each other for decades. We stepped foot on this ship together. I never imagined you could betray us all like this and betray yourself. You accepted the same mission as everybody here, after all. What is my son doing here? He is the reason, isn't he? His condition. Once you heard that there was a chance of a planetary life for him, you took it. But you chose for all of us, not just him. Some of us care about our children, Captain. Tread lightly. Take him to the brig, Bodo. With pleasure. Wait, what about undoing the hack? I thought we needed him. I thought so too, but Navigator Joseph was able to regain control of the system just a moment ago. We can correct our course as soon as it is done rebooting. No, please! Joseph, you are killing my son! Eric. Your son wants to serve the mission, as a matter of fact. He literally won't be able to. He will die before he ever completes his training. He told me he didn't want to sabotage it. Isn't that right, Assistant Navigator Elliot? Yes, Captain. He is a child. He doesn't fully understand what all of this means, and you damn well know it. I merely asked him what he wanted. For the first time in your life, you raging hypocrite! Shut up and move. Now, Teacher Ava, do you have any idea of the damage you've done to our shared goals? Who is us? I think you still overestimate the social cohesion on this ship. Who else is part of your little club? You could have met them all right now if you hadn't taken my PDA away. What do you mean? What were you planning? What do you want? You saw the letter I sent to Louise, didn't you? That should have given you an idea of what we want. More democracy? In the long term, yes. But let's start out with something very concrete. We know all about Otis B. We demand a vote. Let the people decide where they want to go. Everybody cast their vote long ago when they set foot on this ship. I was born on this ship. I never voted for anything. Did you, Stella? I'm sure you'd like to have some agency over your own life for once. Ava? Not like this. Then how, Stella? How will any change ever happen if not like this? The ethics committee was informed of our concerns time and time again, but of course they fell on deaf ears. Maybe not all of us want their parents' job. Maybe not all of us want a child at 35. And maybe not all of us want to die out here. I know I can't force you to do anything, but I'm asking, I'm begging. Please stop forcing us too. Let the people decide. You alone are in control of the situation here, Stella. The executive branch is all yours, for better or for worse. Make the right choice. Tell your people to stand down. Chief, listen to me. This mission is so much bigger than all of us here. Billions of people already cast their vote. They entrusted us with this responsibility, this incredible privilege to serve humanity. It is not up to you or me, or even all of us put together to abandon it. We're not abandoning anything. We're putting the mission's target planet up to a vote. It's simply not up to us. The Codex states clearly that betraying the mission or not is not a choice anyone is authorized to make. I am able to strip you of your powers immediately if you directly jeopardize the mission's success. Do you hear this, Stella? What good is your post if it can be stripped away at will by a single person? I need to think. Start the vote. I know you want to. I know you haven't been happy in a long time. This is your first step towards, is this why you've been trying to get close to me? And Louise too. Just to manipulate me when the time is right. You've been manipulated your whole life, but not by me or Louise. I swear I genuinely like you, Stella. She is still trying to manipulate you, Chief. You cannot let your emotions get the better of you. What's it going to be, Stella? We have to... We have to hold a vote. Chief, with all due respect, how else do you expect us to go forward? We'll continue to be trapped on this ship together. Do you want to turn the residential area into a second brig? She's right, Dad. We should get a broadcast out. Let's get this started. We don't have much time. The wording of this broadcast is going to play a huge role in how people vote. What a democratic thing to say. I'm not advocating for manipulation, quite the opposite. That is why I wanted all of us to be here and discuss it together. We have to make it quick. The navigators are standing by. They haven't touched the controls yet, but we have no more than an hour left until the fuel is depleted. People don't even know about Otis yet. I'm still processing it myself, and I've known for weeks now. How did you find out anyway? That doesn't matter now. I'll tell you after all this is over. I agree it's a lot to take in and base an important decision on, but there's nothing we can do about that. Democracy isn't perfect. We have to trust the people to do the right thing. Because that's never turned out to be a terrible idea. Aren't you a history teacher? We hold a vote, and that's final. What do we need to discuss? We're going to need a paragraph about Otis B and the new terraforming technology, as well as one informing everyone about our agreement. People need to know that the crew is on board with this course of action and will honor the vote. Fine. How are people going to cast their votes? Some foolproof anonymous system would be best, but I suggest we use PDA messages. We should read and evaluate them together as they come in. Can we use your PDA for that, Stella? Mine? Uh, sure. 
Is there anything else you want to include in the broadcast? Actually, there is. I think people should know the full truth to make an informed decision. The truth about what? I'm working myself up to it. Chief? Don't. How do you think we learned the truth about Otis B? Earth never wanted us to know. There is another ship like ours, the Iris. What? Another generation ship? That's enough. Not technically, since they're reaching their goal in just one generation. They're about to reach Otis B. Are you saying we meet other people? Listen. It means that there is already a mission that covers this planet. I'm not going to Eurus D. We wouldn't just change the mission. We would abandon it. It would be completely redundant. People need to know this. Are you serious? This is real. Captain, you saw the message with our own eyes. I did. Still, I can't believe you didn't tell me about this. It's very new to me, too. Okay, great. Now it's even more to process. Let's add it to the paragraph about Otis B. Yeah, thank you for telling us. Navigator Joseph, we have tallied the votes. You really told everyone about the Iris. I've been considering it for so long. I thought everybody deserved to know that we'd be completely redundant on Otis B. People take it to heart? They did. We're going to Eurus D. The mission lives on. Are you ready for the course correction? Yes, Chief. Noelia, are you ready? I am, Dad. Everybody brace yourselves. There'll be a slight shift in gravity in three, two, one. Now! You called for me, Captain? I did. Thank you for coming. I wanted to talk to you ahead of tomorrow's big ethics committee session. No matter the outcome, we have some things to settle between the two of us about the Iris. It was foolhardy to trust the general public with this information, but at least you seem to do so in support of the mission. There's no taking it back now, and I stand by my decision. Anyway, I always knew that introducing voting on anything would be the downfall of the whole system. Democracy is a nice luxury that we cannot afford on the Zephyr. Some situations call for strict hierarchies, and the mission is one of them. We signed away our voting rights when we started it. That's easy to say for the person at the top, who actually did make the decision to be here, unlike many of us. When you're all stuck in a place together, how do you judge or punish your fellow captives? And after a period of turmoil and unrest, who even judges whom in the end? The people who happen to come out on top certainly aren't innocent either. The Ethics Committee struggled with this problem, and decided early on that there wouldn't be any severe punishments such as lengthy prison sentences. Of course, pretending that nothing happened wasn't an option either. We had to strike a balance to keep our little society somewhat functional. It took us months to work through all the accusations and evidence. Between certain individuals, some residual animosity can still be felt to this day. There was a long debate about whether Eric's decision to divert the ship's course was selfish or selfless. Everybody believed his claim that the power outage had been accidental, but that didn't take away from its catastrophic consequences. Four people had died, and many more had suffered severe and long-lasting injuries. At least the damages to the ship turned out to be mostly superficial. The Ethics Committee noted that, regardless of his intent, motive, or state of mind, Eric's actions had been incredibly reckless. He spent the weeks leading up to his sentencing in the brig. The Ethics Committee revoked his access to the bridge and permanently relegated him to the inner hull. The handling of the dissident group was probably the most complicated part. It seemed like the ship was split right down the middle. Half of us celebrated them as heroes, and the other half wanted to see them punished. The compromise ended up being very light sentences for all participants considering their generally non-violent approach. To this day, it's not entirely clear who participated in the movement and what their roles were. Michio admitted that it was his idea to lock me up and attempt to steal weapons from the locker room. Ava never signed off on the idea, nor did anyone else. He spent a few weeks in the brig, but I don't believe it changed him in the slightest. I'm keeping a close eye on him. Ava admitted to having planned the insurrection for over a year. She began her testimony by recounting a late-night conversation at the bar with Geraldo, Michio, and some additional people whose names she wouldn't divulge. She was surprised to be met with universal agreement when she aired her grievances about the Zephyr's rigid social structure. Over the next few months, she went on to formulate a list of demands that slowly morphed into a manifesto for self-determination, which she deemed incompatible with the goals of the mission. She came up with a system to recruit allies without leaving a trace on the Zephyr's networks, which we stumbled upon when the letter in the inner hull was discovered. At that point, 
The movement and its talking points had already gained a lot of support in the general population. Taking the server online and sending out a mass broadcast on arrival day was meant to bring public pressure to a boiling point. However, the plan was delayed when the power outage occurred on that same day through sheer coincidence. Ava and her accomplices had no knowledge of the hack or its intended purpose. When they looked into it through their network, Noelia quickly cracked and revealed the truth about Otis B. The group then devised the plan of putting the course change to a vote and allow the people, as they put it, to be the masters of their own destiny. In a last ditch attempt to force the vote, they made the decision to storm the bridge and stall the course correction. I was thoroughly questioned about my role in the whole ordeal. Leona was on the ethics committee at the time. She spoke out for me every chance she got. I think she really appreciated that I had sided with her about the painkillers for her pet. My decision to make the iris a matter of public record was not punished in any way. On the contrary, it was generally well received. Captain Talia filed a complaint against me for defying her order to arrest Joseph. I stood by my decision, and the matter was ultimately dropped. The ethics committee argued that the situation was complex, and that Joseph turned out not to be a threat to anyone after I let him go. Sometimes I question whether I should continue doing these recordings. They're explicitly meant for a time when I'm long dead. I think I'm just trying to take part in the future in some minuscule way. I never got to see your rusty myself, but at least someone who will remembers me. Tatia? Tatia? Are you up? Of course I'm up, Dad. Can I come in? Sure. They're about to start up the engine. If you want to be there for it, you need to head to the bridge now. I'll be right out. How long will it take to slow down? A couple of days for this maneuver. Another week or so until we orbit your esteem. Wow. The engine was last turned on a hundred years ago, right? At least that's the last time the ship performed that maneuver. You listen to Grandma's recordings, huh? Yeah. She really wanted to see yours for herself. She also really wanted me to see it. Well, uh, she's about to get her wish. Damn right she is. Let's go. I really like that ending because it ties into everything else that's been going on. The ending starts off at a, where the game began. It gives weight to the monologues that were happening throughout the game. There is another ending, which also has touchy-feely stuff in it, which we'll go and explore. But th this we'll consider our ending for my playthrough. It's poetic. We did allow people to have a vote, and we still chose to honor the mission for all of humanity. We completed 10 cases out of 10. We discovered 21 auction encounters. I don't know what this is. On my first run of the game, I got two of this. And again, I had already gotten like what you would call the best ending. And then my bogus run of the game, where I didn't even find Chi Chi on purpose, and I put Chi Chi as my answer to all the cases, I had four optional encounters. I don't know what this is. And 21, that seems completely out of range for me. This is apprehended out of four. I got all four of them. Clues collected 123, and then 37 scans. Talia was Zephyr's captain in it. There are three different captains you can have. I mean, as a result of your ending choices. The Zephyr fulfilled its mission. We could choose to go to Otis or Eurus. We found Chi Chi. We knew who hacked it. it was Eric. We found the leader, that was Ava. And we found the person responsible, that was Curtis. I really liked the storyline. In fact, all of the cases was relevant to the story, which made it such a strong narrative compared to many other games today. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times you'll do something like a fetch quest or collection quest or a kill quest and it has absolutely nothing to do with anything you're working on. I'm not even talking about an MMORPG stuff. I'm just talking about, let's say you're playing an RPG and there's a guy who says, hey, I'll give you 100 gold if you go and collect five herbs. Okay, that's not relevant to the ending of your game, but in this one, even when we're having to discover stuff about fertilizer for a 20-year-old case, 
That's so that the guy will feel comfortable telling you about what he thinks he knows regarding the Navigator case. All the while, the case is actually very important to your family. So all of it was actually very strongly tied together, which made the weak point that even if you deliberately bombed missions like I had on one of my attempts, it plays out mostly the same. <laughs> That's the bad part. Yes, there are differences. And as I mentioned, there are three captains. I'm going to tell you right now that hostile takeover is how you kind of change captains, okay? I get all of that. I just know that they were not able to structure a, a strong narrative in many different directions, which, understandably, is a tall order. If the hostile takeover happens, you're pretty much forced into a voting path, and if you refuse to vote, then you are forced to complete your mission, which is what you would expect. I'm happy with the ending we get, and I will show you the alternative ending as well, but this one is our canon ending. For now, this is Tran signing off. Thank you very much, Richie. Tran wins Between Horizons. I'll see you next time. Dad died a little over three years ago. It's actually arrival day today, but that no longer means anything. Well, except for one thing. We just received another communication from Earth. It's the first one since we came clean about the course change. I don't know yet how they took it, but I assume they're pretty disappointed. The captain forwarded one message to me directly hours ago. It's time I watched it. Hello, my beautiful daughter. I don't even know where to begin. I hope you're safe and sound out there. I'm not going to lie, a lot of people on Earth are pretty pissed at you. But you know what? I say, good for you. I'm glad the Sparrow decided to spread its wings and fly free. Mission Control left you in the dark about your options, which I never supported. I'm proud of you for figuring it out. Nobody here has any idea how you did it. Thank you for trying to tell us all those years ago, Mom. I... Ever since they said that we'd re-establish contact with you, I thought about this next part. I was devastated to hear about William's passing. I thought you'd have so much time left together. I hope you're holding up okay. I wish I could be there for you. It's hard for me to say much more about it. You know him so much better at this point than I probably ever did. But I do know that the man I remember would want you to come into your own. I don't know how things work on this ship now that you've changed oars. I just want you to know that you can do whatever you set your mind to. I wish you all the success in the universe. Thank you, Mom. Stell? Stell, are you in there? I'm here. Come in. Listen, we're... Oh, Chi-Chi almost slipped out. Yeah, she keeps trying to do that. You think I should just let her go? As in, let her roam free? Yeah, give her a shot at being an outside pet. I mean, she wouldn't be the only one on the ship. They seem to handle themselves just fine. Let her out. Open the door. Are you sure? Yeah, she clearly wants it. You say so. See you soon, Chi-Chi. Listen, Stell. We're about to establish contact with Iris again. We're getting so close now, we can talk without delay. It's time to discuss our next steps together. The captain wants you to be there for it. Sounds exciting. I'm ready. Lead the way. Alright, let's go. Oh, I almost forgot. Happy arrival day, Stell. Happy arrival day. <laughs>